If you go up to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. If you go up to the loft today, you're sure of a big surprise. Cause every train there ever was has gathered there for certain because today's the day that Jenny hosts the Monday Club. Yay! A big hello to everybody. How are you doing? It's great to see you. I hope I find you well. And uh, we did say there's going to be a hat theme going on. Um, Zoe said that last week. So... I don't remember it, but I did bring my hat. So she's got the best her... hat, the best hat in the world. No. Um, so she's got her silly oversized Guinness St. Patrick's Day hat, and I have something far more tasteful. Which is actually really annoying me, so I'm going to take it off. I don't do Would you like hats. my Guinness hat instead? No, no. It's nice and for me. No, no, I'll put this back on then. Oh dear. There we are. It's a jaunty angle. It's very jaunty. Anyway, hello everybody. And, uh, oh, let me just untangle my cable. Um, oh dear, the stream's just uh, decided to break. Ah, no, we're back. Ascot hat, says David Scott. Yes. Yes, Ladies' Day. You can't Ascot. beat this. You can't beat this. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, so, big hello to everybody. Also, just like to give a big, big thanks to Robert Steers, who's already donated six pounds ninety-eight oh on uh, the PayPal dot me. Uh, I'm guessing that that was a, a whole number of dollars, uh, US dollars, but it's come out uh, as six pounds ninety-eight. Thank you ever so much for that. Um, and uh, let's see, who have we got? Who's in the house? We've got Garthian. Whose uh, house runs house. Yeah, uh, Garthian, Ham Shackleton, Clive Cobalt, James Hardy, Matt Avell, Pete Clark, CJ, McBenman1, Man Andy 1962, Flymo Chairman1, Patrick Ling, Pete Clark. Uh, let's have a look. Who Robinson's else? Has already spotted the TARDIS. Oh, my word. Gosh, you people. Oh, how? How? Well, oh, where? hang on. A uh, TARDIS over in the Girder Bridge, he says. In the Girder Bridge? No. Oh. No, oh. We, we have a false positive. Ah, he's seen, uh, yes. He's probably he's... seen the Class 7. Yes. So, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, Pete Clark, Southern Train Girl, hi to you. Robert Becking, Stevie Phil, Leslie Gilpin, Bagnell Dave, uh, uh, Clive Cobold, uh, Blackpool Steve. Bang Got You Junction, Carl Brown, Grogston Model Railway, Putham Junction, Josh's Train Room, Johnny Rotten, uh, Z Fantasy Trains, D827 Kelly, and uh, let's see who else have we got? Aiden's Railways, uh, Josh's Train Room, Alex Faxton says, Lovely hat. I hate hats. Now, hats do absolutely nothing for me. I'm one of those people for whom their head is just the wrong shape and size for hats. In fact, this, and I've got one just like it, but in a sort of a purpley colour, are the only hats I've ever um, managed to find which vaguely seem presentable. So I wear them to weddings and things like that. So uh, this is like, I had to dust the dust off it. Um, but um, when I was in Sea Cadets, I had the old aircraft carrier hats. And they just made me look utterly, utterly stupid. Um, so I really, I just, I don't suit hats. Um, a big hello to George Botterini, Paul of Bramley Junction, Dean Fielding, uh, Roof Railways. Uh, let's have a look. Who else we got? David Scott. Uh, Mark Wilson says, hi, me ducks. I always come in now a few minutes late to miss the song. <laughs> Oh. Did you miss it? Oh, well, we can give you another rendition. No, we can't. No. Um, no, st stop today. it now. Stop it. Stop it. Tony Wright, uh, hi to you. Uh, Ian Turvey says, good evening, ladies. And the Monday, the Monday modelling mob. Oh, yes. 3M, Monday modelling mob. Um, Logan Clary, um, it's my model railway. Garthian says, I have a top hat I bought in Port Myrian in 2019. Top hats are cool. Top hats are cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a... Uh, well, we've got... There's a lot of people in. Oh, gosh, we're up to 259 already. Um, so, hi, Kent. Hi to you there. Uh, 
Uh, Wamgok, Henry's Transport Adventures and Beyond. It says, Jenny has a hat. Wow. What, why do people think that I'm not the kind of person to own a hat? Because you always talk about how you never wear hats. I never wear hats, apart from when I do. So, enjoy. You've enjoyed. I'm taking that off now. Oh, it, it's it's not my... Wear this instead. No, 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 wear no, this no. Instead. Put the hat on. No. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Dazza 1977, <laughs> hi to you. Uh, hello to John Holding, <laughs> Madden <laughs> Steam <laughs> Railways, J94, Simon Trains Model Railway Showcase, SJ Carter, Gone Loco, David Ellingford, New Layout Newbie, DL Warren, Alice Neal. Um, big hello to you, Alice. I've been following with great interest your brake van builds. They've been really, really quite inspiring. So thanks for sharing those with me. Um, uh, Jeremy Brooks, Tim Condrup, Noswith Da. Uh, oh my goodness, Jock thank you Bat so much, George Botterini. Oh, right. Uh, I'm going to quickly get back up to date. George Botterini, thank you ever so much for donating $10 for the beverage of choice. Well, thank you very much. I will drink to that. And thank you ever so much. It is an immense help to the channel because it does help us be able to keep producing our red hot maximum bottom kicking lineup of videos um in fact i think we haven't missed a single video output for nearly two years now um we've been putting out at least three a week every single week including the monday club um and you'd think that we'd run out of ideas but uh, actually um we're, we're kind of doing all right uh, now you may remember that i posted to the monday club facebook group um a post from rails of sheffield about saying that they found some more of these it's the dynamometer car i did buy one and it's arrived and um i i need to get back to them actually um because i have sent them a message because the lighting um i can't get the lighting to turn on on that but that will be coming in a review i'm just waiting on them to see what we can do to get the lighting working oh i'm not so, not so keen on the coke zero it's a bit too sweet for me i my taste buds are acclimatized to diet coke your taste buds are acclimatized to whatever you get your hands on no i don't like it ah, 1962 sweet. makes a good point here mm. happy burns night everyone ah Yes, because we'd normally be doing the whiskey tasting and the uh, with the haggis. Yes, would you like to taste some whiskey? Um, maybe a wee dram in the Coke might take the sweetness off. Where is some whiskey? Um, in the whiskey cupboard. <laughs> we have a cupboard for whiskey. Does that mean I have to get off? Well, how were you expecting me to? I don't like... know. Oh, oh, just magic. I was hoping you'd say no because you drank wine earlier. Oh. Wine then whiskey, you'll feel frisky. I think that's how the saying goes. Uh, right, what else have we got? Um, uh, actually, I quite like haggis. Haggis, uh, some people go... Like, vegetarian haggis that they always have as a substitute at the, the Burns Night the week or two. It's mm. delicious. It's all right, yeah. I prefer the proper meaty I, uh, I haggis. I have that uh, more than mm. once a year. Let's put it that way. Yeah, haggis is actually not too bad. You just try not to think about what it's made of. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, right, we have some news. In fact, actually, there's a lot of news gone down. It's very helpfully, all seems to have turned up on the Monday. I was thinking yesterday. <laughs> Don't appear to have any news. Right. Uh, right uh, Mark Wilson has a brilliant uh, response for you. Mm? You should only eat free-range haggis. Battery haggis is awful. Yes. Now, uh, haggis is... There's, there's a very, very specific season excuse me, for hunting haggis. Um, and they're very elusive. Uh, nobody quite is sure what they look like. Um, Andy1962 says, Very impressed you have a whiskey cupboard. Um, it's actually a booze cupboard, but there's a lot of whiskey in there. Hello to Island Scenics. Um, Henry's Transport Adventures and Beyond says, With that $10, ten dollars you'll be able to buy real coke, not just cheap stuff from Little. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, we have expensive tastes, darling. So we've got... It's Coke Zero. Don't like the full fat stuff, far too sweet. And actually, Coke Zero, to my palate, is very, very sweet. I, I've become used to Diet Coke and much prefer it. Um, uh, Mike and Sue Putum Junction says, Had our haggis, neep and tatty, wee dram lines up for later. Excellent. Um, right. Um, so, in the news today, uh, you may have seen it. I posted it not long before we came on air. 
but uh, Hattons have had the first two batches, so it's the carmine and cream, blood and custard to the rest of us, and also the um, the all over maroon uh, liveried uh, full teak coaches, so the Gresley teaks, and these are to go with their A3 and A4 locomotives that are already out. And there's been a bit of an issue. They've arrived and apparently there's a lot of issues being found with them. So they have been opening them up. Oh, thank you ever so much. Oh my word, this is this is quite a, quite a turn up for the books. Uh, on Burns night, I'll be drinking Welsh whiskey. This is Penderin that uh, the well, cupboard monkey- I can't have you doing the right thing. Uh, so the cupboard monkey has actually found a bottle of uh, Penderin Legend, which is a Welsh whisky. Penderin Legend? Mm. Jennifer Kirk. Well, I don't have a clean glass, but I'd like to say... It, this is too good to go in the Coke, so I'll, I'll be... I will be swigging this... Um, no, you're not picking up this bottle with that. <laughs> is that do you need a hand? Oh, need a hand, yes. Mm. Uh, right, stop it now. Come on now. Um... <laughs> Ron B says neeps are turnips. Ah, I didn't actually know that. Yeah. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Jerry BVR, hi to you. Robin Slewer. Um, yeah, Garthian says I can't have full fat coke. Way too much glucose for my diabetes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like yeah I, I'll be honest. I'm amazed that they still sell the full fat stuff because have you seen that people are going to our shop? Um, well, I try, it, I try not it, to. <laughs> if it's not made of fat or made of sugar, they're not interested. Well, this Coke Zero is actually quite sickly sweet. It's like, uh, mm. remember that uh, old joke that was on a comedy thing where mm. a, a really obnoxious uh, kid and their mother was in a shop and the kid was wanting chocolate and the mother just eventually just lost it and turned around and said, No, you don't like it, it's got fruit in it. <laughs> uh, big hello to... Um, Ron B, who says haggis grows on trees. No, 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 no. They're a very curious creature that has uh, one set of legs on one side, slightly longer than the legs on the other, so that they can remain level whilst they're uh, fr grazing on the steep slopes of the Scottish uplands. Um, also, hi to Mark Jenkins, Josh's train room. Uh, I think we might have mentioned you before, but... Um, Fat Wallet Boy 2 says, no roller cola at Kirk HQ. Oh, of course not. No roller, roller cola. My goodness, I haven't seen that for years. J. Paul Anderson, hi to you. Uh, David Cook, Island Scenics. Uh, Rachel Houston says, Neeps is a yellow orange root vegetable and tatties. Yeah, I knew that tatties was potatoes because people in the northeast say that as well. Uh, Leslie Gilpin says it's not carmine and cream, it's crimson and cream. We don't uh, say a, tatties, we say, we say tatties. Okay, we've moved on. Uh, 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 what was that? No, I, I always refer to it as um, as blood and custard. Is the um, how I've always known the. Um, I'm just looking around actually. I don't have any up here in that livery. Well, they're all in the fiddle yard underneath. Um, but um, I've also heard it called plum and spilt milk. Um, but carmine and cream is what Hatton's described as. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the ranch, Hatton's have uh, released a post just to say that they have uh, identified faults with a sizable number. Um, not all, but a sizable number of the coaches. So what they are doing is that they've now got a grading and a pricing structure. So you can either buy perfect ones at the original, um, I think it's 179 per coach, or if it's got one fault, there's a, a pricing bracket, two faults, different pricing bracket, and down to three faults. The faults are um, issues with things like scratches on the paint on the wheels, smudging of the paint finish on the coat, excuse me, glue marks on the windows, missing detail parts on the bogies, uh, loose roofs, loose glazing, 
there does seem to be quite a few different potential faults and it does seem that they've had some kind of a, a major issue with quality control on Almost those. Almost as if they've just slapped something together at the factory and thrown it out. It does make you wonder what they're... I'm, I'm guessing this is a factory issue. Um, but on but top of that... All of that doesn't come to uh, shipping problems. That's factory. Oh, no. That's, I know. You can't smudge the paint in the shipping. Yeah, it's um, a factory issue. And, and the thing about the detail is missing detail on the bogies. Now, I happen to say that they don't have any spare detailing parts now if if they fell off in transit they'd be they'd in the box there, yeah. yeah so this is a, this is a big issue at the factory i'm guessing now on top of that uh, i've literally with seconds to go been sent information about the flangeways salmon uh um bogey bolster wagon which is an engineer's wagon and uh, apparently the model itself is 20 millimeters too short now i don't mean a scale 20 millimeters too short it's an actual uh, that much too short which two are, centimeters yeah two centimeters too short which equates to probably somewhere in the region of one and three quarter meters too short um uh, on the prototype so it'd be like if you just chopped a meter and three quarters off the end of the prototype and that does seem a bit peculiar. Now, I can't find any reference from Flangeway as to whether there's a, a genuine uh, reason for this. It's almost like they misread their tape measure. <laughs> but there we are. I'm uh, starting to see a reason why uh, manufacturers might think about bringing their factories closer to home. No, and this was a point made by Fran Burke, actually, of a curious scale, said, don't assume that everything that's coming out of China is slapped because it's not. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they've now got a long turnaround time to get replacements. If they had their factories closer to home, the turnaround time would be much shorter. Um, yeah, but the problem is the cost. Um, and the cost is actually in the labour. What you've got to remember is that uh, labour is probably one of your biggest costs. Assembling um, a model is very labor intensive and very skilled labor intensive um and uh, it would it would really ramp up the cost of making these things if we did it in the uk because you would have to pay people for that I'm and we're not in the uk either closer to home i'm thinking factories in eastern europe so yeah like but the thing is you'd so still you have to train, pay wham it's straight into the uk in a couple of days yeah but you'd still have to pay them a lot more and it's very intensive so you couldn't get away with paying the minimum wage because who's going to do a very intensive very skilled job for minimum wage they're not going to mm. so you have to pay a premium uh, and as Fran Burke said, you know, th there is good stuff coming out of China. And, you know, we've just recently seen a video of the Acura Scale Class 92. Um, I think that's the EP. And it really does look to be an amazing model. And I was speaking to Fran, um, it was either earlier today or yesterday. Uh, we just traded some messages. And he said to me that the detail on the roof of that model is actually surprising even him. And he's one of the people involved in the actual production of this model. And it, you know, he says it's breathtaking. So I'm really looking forward to that Class 92. It's not from a period that I would particularly be personally interested in for, for my modelling era. But I'm actually really interested to see that locomotive in the flesh when it comes because it looks to be a, 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 another leap ahead of some of the other models that we've had in the past. Now, as I understand it, the actual release dates are the Class 55 is coming out first, the Class 92 will follow that into the shops, and the Class 37 will be the third locomotive release. Now, I think they're all due to come during 2021. Now I did ask Fran at Acura Scale about future announcements of locomotives. Obviously I'm not going to ask him what are you going to announce because he's not going to tell me. I wouldn't expect him to. But there are going to be other new locomotive announcements. We can but guess what they're going to be. All I will say is that we've pretty much run out of BR diesel and electrics other than the classes 81 to excuse me 84 so um, I am intrigued whether we might actually see the first Steam release uh, being announced from a Cura scale. Right, um, 
James Hardy says blood and custard sounds better. I always knew it as blood and custard. Um, Jerry BVR says hi all. Sorry I'm late. Distracted by SpaceX. Oh, what's Elon Musk blasted into space today? His ego. Oh, oh right. Uh, Lee Holden, hello to you. Says good evening, Zoe and Jennifer. With, with the cost of imports going up, do you think we will see Hornby prices going up? Um, yeah, there's there's three things in this world which are inevitable: death, taxes, and the rising price of model railway. And Monday items. club. Oh, well, okay. Monday is oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Cottesmore says uh, it would be unfair to speculate as to why it's incorrect. I also don't think bringing them close to home would make any difference. Yeah. Both of those are not what I was saying. Yeah. As I said to you, it's not about bringing them close to home to make them better quality. I'm not saying that. It's about did. controlling your supply line. Exactly. Your supply mm. line is too long if your factory is on the other side of the planet. If you have an issue, you have to wait a long time. Well, to get the there is a. Um, there were, I don't know whether it's been introduced, but there was a, a container um, train service being done from China. So they were going to run, and I think it's four days it takes a train. How expensive is that going to be? My goodness. Probably, probably um, less expensive than the cargo ship. You think so? Yeah, um, and you think four days as opposed to four to six weeks. Yes, four days is excellent, but you are, I can't see anyone not wanting to have to pay for, get people to pay for that. If you're providing a premium service, mm. and at you're the moment, charge. At the moment, you're looking at somewhere between ten and eleven thousand dollars. Is it dollars or pounds mm. for a shipping container? Just to have the shipping container and move it from China to the UK. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? Um, so yeah, Samuel so Ives, no wonder, hi to you. To be honest with you, no wonder these trains cost a lot of money these days. Mm. Yeah, Garthian says Penderin whiskey is gorgeous. I've had a few drams of it over the years since I turned 18. You and me both, in fact. What Zoe has actually brought up is a nearly empty bottle of the stuff. You do like it, though. I do, actually. I got quite into Penderin when I, I first came across it. Uh, right. Uh, David Cook says, is it ethically okay for us to buy from China? You've got to make that decision yourself. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, we don't do politics on here. Uh, no, you know, we're not blind to what's alleged to be going on. Not uh, alleged. There's there's evidence. Yeah. Okay. Um. And yeah, it's <sighs> nothing is clear cut in life. Um. It, it is worrying. I have to say. But we can't make that decision for you. Yeah. And yeah. we know what we would do, but at the same time. We can't tell you what you should do. Yeah, it's not. It's not our. It's not right for us to say. Uh, AP Technical Services says Penderin, great and nice place to visit when open. Oh, I bet it is. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, speaking of the packages uh, issue and transport, Patrick says any update on you? You know what? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, settle in for the story of the package. Oh yes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so. <laughs> If anybody's not been following uh, Game Hammer Classic Gaming uh, and uh, Zoe Robinson, the uh, um, Zoe Kirk Rob, which is what is your page called? Um, my personal uh, page on YouTube is ZJKR. Ah, uh, well, the saga of the so for anybody who's not familiar of the saga of the package. Now, yes. just to <laughs> to paint a background for you, imagine placing an order with a UK company for a product made in the UK to be shipped from a UK location, Southampton as it happens, up to uh, north end of Great, Greater Manchester. So it should be a case of products here in the UK, boxes here, put them together, uh, letter them up for, uh, address them up, and it should just go in the post and turn up here presumably the day after. Instead, where did that package go? So, I ordered this on Boxing Day. Mm -hmm. And I knew that over the Christmas period, the guy who was a sole trader, he wasn't going to be making stuff. So I was prepared to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I waited and I was very happy. Got a notice saying it would arrive from DHL on the 12th of January. <laughs> so, I headed to... They had put it into DHL's hands. They took it to Southampton into their sorting office. <laughs> and they sent me a message saying it would be there to be there on the, by midnight on the twelfth. <laughs> what actually happened? Meanwhile, is, <laughs> at eleven o'clock on the twelfth, they packaged it up, 
and sent it to Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Yes, so at the moment, basically, this parcel is having a grand trip around uh, Northern Europe. Bear in mind, somehow this parcel has got over there, given that it had no customs declaration, because it didn't need a customs declaration. It is clearly identified as going to north side of Manchester from Southampton. So how it ended up in Europe, I don't know, but they seem to have now had some kind of a major malfunction on the simple expediation of putting the blooming parcel on a, on a boat or a truck and go, take it back to the UK. It should never have come here in the first place. Yeah. So basically, they're at the moment panicking because this thing has no customs uh, form. I think that's probably so what the problem is. So it can't have got in, but it did. And now it can't get back out. And you'd have thought that somebody would have the common sense. Oh, I, it, so it yeah, gets better. Common sense is a very, very, very scarce commodity in this process. But um, it gets better. You'd have thought they'd just put it on a truck and go, look, just, just yeah. there it is. When it gets to the other side, they can't go, oh, well, where's its customs declaration? Because when they look at it, it goes, oh, it doesn't need one. It was posted and, in Southampton. I going keep to saying Manchester. to them, look, just put it in the, the in the cab with the driver and say it's his lunch and just get it through yeah but no that's not even the best part the oh best no. part is common sense I took a sat on it for four days while they tried to work out what to do gave up and sent it to brussels and what Brussels, Brussels then do? took one look at it and sent it back to Eindhoven they, and they have been passing it back and forward ever since. I still don't have my parcel. So they're playing a game of pass the parcel. Yes, they're, they're literally playing pass the parcel. Yeah. Meanwhile, I still don't have it. Okay, well that is the saga of the parcel. So you, you think Hermes are bad because they'll, <laughs> oh, no. they'll uh, do a, a handbrake turn onto your driveway then uh, boot your parcel over your fence. But at least it will get to your house. Yeah, at least it'll be in the same country as you when it gets delivered. <coughs> but yes, um, DH fail as we we started. We're trying to trend that hashtag on Twitter. Yes, but you D can. Help. <laughs> yeah, you can. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, you can chart the progress of the parcel, and we've had sightings from on the top of the Space Needle in Seattle, right through to. Um, um, where else have people been claiming they've seen oh, it? Oh yes, they they saw it uh, storming or, the Capitol building, <laughs> orbiting the the International Space Station. I got one message saying uh, uh, greetings from North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I still don't have my parcel. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> But, um, yeah, definitely. All right, anyway, there was other news, but I can't remember what it was. Everyone's saying blame Brexit. It was never meant to go to you. It was the UK thing. From yeah. a, I could have walked and picked it up from his house. Actually, you probably could have in this time. It would have been quite a jolly walk. But, and it would uh, have been thin. No, you wouldn't. You'd, <laughs> no, have, you'd wouldn't have, have, have stopped for pies and stuff on the way. Big hello to Jerry BVR. Uh, Mark Wilson says, Jenny, can we have an update on the new TV series? Nudge, nudge, wink, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. Um, yes, I've been hard at work. I finished my filming block for the new TV series on next week. You think you do? As far as we're aware, filming um, is still going ahead uh, because there's a... What? <laughs> Ryan Jesus, is that the parcel Bernie Sanders was holding at the inauguration last week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it probably was. But as you can see... Uh, Garkin has immediately found the TARDIS. Oh, well, of course he has. And so has Gromston. All oh, right. <laughs> so, um... A hidden says, this. that's what Elon Musk was sending into space. <laughs> yes. I like the way you're thinking there. <laughs> Ah <laughs> uh, right. Oh, we um, have a good laugh at my expense. Yeah. Uh, Aiden's railway says. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, just read that. Um, oh, everybody's. Uh, everybody's uh, jumping in on the parcel. But anyway, that's the saga of the parcel. Uh, huh. um, Russell Benton, going back to the cost of making stuff in China. China labour costs are about a fifth of our rate. Yeah, and that's the thing. Even though wages in China have gone up tremendously, actually that camera angle's a little bit uh, weird now because we've wonked? got no, we've got extra lights <laughs> on up here, and it just swamps it. So, no, wrong light. You, that's not the one to turn off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to a different angle. 
Um, because that's quite strobing quite nastily on there. I think we that's the camera we need to replace. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Henry's transport says Hermes will break your windows when they deliver your parcels, then run off and crap into your wall. What's this? Who? <laughs> what? But at least you'll get your parcel. <laughs> Simon Train says, I can see Bernie Sanders on one of your trains tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With his little mittens. I must admit, actually. Oh, the Jenny cam's frozen. Has Jenny, it? what have you done? When, I do, when did that freeze? Well, you'll have to turn it off and then on again, won't you? That's weird. So, <laughs> ah, well, hold on. Da, 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 da. Will this pick back up where it left? I hope so. Right, we're connected again. I think we're back. So, uh, hopefully so, that will come up. Um, so, guys, we should be back. Yep, we seem to be back. Oh, right, we have reappeared. Oh, my goodness. It just crashed. The computer completely crashed after that camera froze. Um, so we're just waiting now. The chat's just come back up on screen. Um, oh, my goodness. The stress. I'm going to have no hair left, and it's <laughs> going to be grey and fall out. I didn't find that stressful at all. But no, uh, you just sat oh, there while oh, I did it. What's it doing it. now? Don't worry about it. It's doing stupid no, things. No, I've loaded up YouTube, so I can get the monitor back. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jenny, stop um, worrying. Right, let's let's change the. Oh my goodness, guys! <laughs> I, I, pfft, Did you yeah. immediately press the button to change the camera? Yeah, but oh. look, I'm still moving, oh. still moving. Yeah. Oh, the stress, the stress. Oh. Anyway, oh, what were we talking about? Uh, if everybody says what... a hacker sped bit through your internet cables. Yeah, no. Uh... <laughs> 285 are watching now. Yeah, D oh, D H failed. Put her outside, going. Oh yeah, you're gonna talk. You're gonna make out like we're complete wallies. Well, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna unplug your phone line. Oh wait a minute, that's the internet. <laughs> we're gonna send your internet to Einhoven. Oh my goodness. So you're talking uh, about something, Jenny? Was I? Yes, I can't remember what it was. I don't know. It was really not that important. <laughs> But um, loads and loads of comments coming. We're back up to about 312 people. So oh don't forget goodness. to consider tickling the like button and sharing the stream as well. Share us on social media uh, and let people know that we A, the back. Monday Club is on and B, to all those people who went, oh, this is boring. Okay, apparently that we can say that someone's asked you about Hattons and the issues that were going on there. Yeah, and basically with Hattons, the issues are with the O-Gage Gresley Teak coaches. So far, they've had a delivery of the Maroon coaches and the Blood and Custard coaches and have found faults with a significant enough uh, quantity of the batch that they're selling some of them as seconds with documented faults at a cheaper price. Um, and then, you know, we got went off at a tangent talking about China. It's probably the Chinese civil service going, <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, but no, we were talking about the cost of manufacturing in China. And what you've got to remember is that whilst rage, wages have risen quite substantially in China, because they've got to pay a better wage, because otherwise they won't get the workforce, and not the skilled workforce that they need, because they are competing in a labour market with the likes of um you know like people, the, the factories making the apple and the samsung type phones which is very highly paid work as well and requires the skilled work do they need so, a hand come in come in ah you pulled my hand off yeah just just stop it my hand <laughs> he's took my heart and my hand mm. now mm. 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 Right, anyway, so, um, even though wages... Everyone's saying gone again, but uh, not according to me. Uh, what? Garthian says gone. Oh. Uh -huh. Nope, not here. Froze for two seconds, says it's my model railway. Um, oh, dear. Uh, we, we're still green. We're still uploading at quite a rate. So, um, let's try a different camera angle. Nope, I'm Boom. still... Epic is still here for me. Uh, Re reload your, your web page, reload the YouTube page and see how yeah, that's going. Um, I'm still moving on the screen. Yeah, everything's still fine here. Yeah, um, yeah, because I'm getting... Oh yeah, the connectivity did drop. Look at that. Whoa. YouTube just dropped everyone and then brought them back up. Well, no, 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 that, that's when we went offline. No, that's just now. Are you sure? Yeah. 
No, that that's when. Jen, we... that's updating as we go. That is just now. Oh right, well there was uh, some kind of issue. We've got 349 people. Like I said before, don't that forget to YouTube tickle sense. the like button, share the stream too, because sharing is caring, and do consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already done so. But right, anyway, meanwhile back at the ranch, the Hatton's coaches, uh, we were debating what could have caused that, and I'm not really sure, but I have spoken with um, Fran Burke at Acura Scale, albeit a different company. Uh, and he did say that um, they're not having any problems with um, their production. So different uh, factories, perhaps. I don't know. But also the Flangeways Salmon Engineers Ow. bogey wagon has turned over. Somebody spotted it already. Yeah, they spotted it ages ago. And then we uh, went off. <laughs> and then oh, we... oh, my knee is gone. Oh, did it oh. just go crunch? We're having a bad night tonight. Yes, you are. Um, okay, but, uh, Jeff Paul Anderson is speaking in Dutch, and I don't know what he's nah, saying. Ah, oh, look, uh, we have this um, gazam, the, uh, train, train for the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, Ikem wrote, as it worked well here, did freeze for a second. Uh, big hello to Ian the train. Paul Higgins suggests it's snow on the lines. Now, it is weird weather that we've been having here. We've had a lot of snow and ice as well. Then the snow comes overnight and then just all melts during the day and then comes back in the night. Yeah, we also have a few issues uh, with the internet around here, of course, since <coughs> someone uh, about a mile away from here set fire to one of the junction boxes. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, one of the um, the big junction boxes on the street. Um, somebody decided it was a great idea to set fire to it. And as Zoe said, it's about a mile away from here, so that could be causing some kind of an issue. Yeah. Um, J. Paul Anderson says, just discovered Ron B. and I live practically next door to each other, neighbouring towns in the Netherlands. Okay, can well, I ask you a favour? Can you go around to DHL and just get my parcel, please? <laughs> then what are they supposed to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Try throwing it really hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it might get further to me than the DHL uh, would get it. Oh, uh, thumb somebody down at the port at Rotterdam, and they say, "Here, would you drop this off when you get to the other side of the of the channel?" Um, James Petz it disapproves of setting fire to junction boxes. Yeah, so do we. Actually, it's just, it's a very silly thing to do. Hey, kids, don't do it because you'll be hanging with the uncool kids. Um, right, Stevie Film says, "I measured one of the salmon's." 229 millimetres over headstock should be 248 millimetre, uh, i.e. a 60 foot track panel won't fit. And um, when I've been looking online about this, this is a very peculiar one. Now, give credit to Hattons, they've been open and honest that they had this problem and they've put forward a, a proposed solution which is that, you know, if you think, you know, I can, I can fix that, that's not a problem, or there's like minor things that, yeah, we're fine with that. You can get them at a slightly reduced price, but as far as I'm aware, flangeways, nothing official has been said as to why they are 20 millimeters too short. Um, and I know there's a lot of people posting in disappointment at this, and it just shows you've got to keep um, your your customer base well informed. Uh, it's as simple as that. You can't just go da da. Right, okay, we're going to walk away. Yeah, this thing is is something that a lot of people have been really looking forward to and i can see a lot of people being very disappointed by that that is a yeah. big discrepancy we're not talking about just a couple of millimeters we don't, no, we'll let that slide but it's uh, going to be noticeable. It's, it's noticeable and i've actually seen a photograph of somebody holding up um it's the flangeways model next to uh i can't remember which company it is there's a company that does it in kit form and when you put them side by side, they, they might as well be completely different wagons. So that is quite peculiar. Um, all right, Mark Wilson says, if it's not a big package, try a carrier pigeon. <gasps> shoot the pigeon, shoot Don't the pigeon. Don't shoot. Not when it's got my parcel. Oh, no, it's catch the pigeon. Big hello to Underground Eric says, have you bought a five-inch loco yet? Not yet, no. Um, oh. <laughs> don't get us started, don't get us started. I must admit, though, with lockdowns and stuff, there doesn't seem to be a huge point at the moment because it couldn't go anywhere with it. But, you yeah, would, I really... You would fix wheels. 
uh, uh, tires to the wheels and you put pedals on the side and no, you just go up and down the street. No, no. E -e 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 -e. Yes, you would. No, you I know would. you would. What I am trying to do is persuade my father as his next model engineering project to build a live steam five inch gauge locomotive. And I think I've sold the idea to him on this. So um, when he's finished his four inch gauge Garrett, uh, and that's uh, when I say four inch gauge, that's that's four inches to the foot. So it's actually one third the size of the real one. Um, and when he's finished that, I'm trying to get him to consider a standard class four tank locomotive as perhaps his next project. So we're, we're getting there, but um, there, is, there is plans afoot. Deal Warren says, tell them to stick it on the DFDS ferry. It'll drop it off about 20 minutes from my house and I can then post it. Right. Moment, I'm, I'm planning to walk down to the coast and swim across to get it. Yeah. Uh, David Scott says, if the junction box is a mile away, it's no wonder you're getting problems. Ah, no, no, this isn't technically our junction box. It's, it's a, a local box. one. Yeah. And we did, we did speculate whether that might have actually caused some degree of an issue with the, the internet in the local area. Yeah. Um, so we're not sure on that. Um, right, Daniel's OO Model Railway says, do you know if there's any way to make the ring field motor better? Now you can buy, certainly this was the case, with the old Hornby Doubler and later Wren models with the ring field motor, you could buy a replacement drop-in neodymium magnet replacement which does by all accounts you dramatically i do yes neodymium magnets got some here really tiny really powerful uh really great uh, i love them so useful uh and of course um neodymium as an element has been uh, known about for probably a good 200 years or so um but in terms of reliably making magnets out of it that's a comparatively recent thing but a neodymium magnet you can buy them and they just are a drop in direct like for like replacement for the um for the ferrous cobalt magnets which uh, they were originally fitted with and that does dramatically improve the performance of such motors but by and large in all honesty um it, it, you can polish you can polish a dump all you like but at the end of the day it's still a dump even if it's a shiny dump and some of these older models you, there's only so much performance you can rediscover in them as it were right um daniel's oo gauge uh, oh sorry i've just read that one out um Paul Higgins says a lot of blue and yellow diesels in shot, Jenny. Uh, yeah, there's a, uh, and when we go to my turntable, and um, notionally, I model 90, late 1970s, early 1980s, BR Tots Blue. That's the period I really do love. You, you really do. I mean, look I, at this class. I do, but, uh, well, no, but then look at the steam locomotives. I do yeah. have a magpie eye for uh, lots and lots of other things. So... You will be seeing behind the Sutton Locomotive Works Class 24. Do you want we have to got change the channel, uh, the video, so that people can see it. Well, yeah, it's some quiet. It's no, Ollie's here, and he's saying, "What's that story about the package?" We'll tell you later. Later, <laughs> later on today, we'll we'll uh, regale you with it. Yeah, sit down, sit down, come in, get yes. comfortable. Last time we talked about the package story, the internet yeah, fell over. Yeah, DH fail. Uh, <laughs> decided to stop delivering the broadband feed. There, there, there. Which, which one were you pointing? You were going to change the camera to show. No, no, no. There it is. Right there's ah, right, the Sutton okay. Locomotive Works thing. And if I go, yeah. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> My goodness. So anyway, that's the Sutton Locomotive Works Class Twenty Four. It actually belongs to Garthian. It uh, and it's been marooned here because of lockdown. Yeah, uh, we can't we can't go and send it back. Yeah, but um, We're certainly not sending it by DHL. No, no, uh, I don't think I don't think Garthian really particularly wants it to end up somewhere in in Belgium. <laughs> um, but um, the coaches that you see behind that are uh, the Bankman Bird Cage coaches in Southeastern Chatham Railway. So why delivery. is that new one not with those? The new what? What? The, the, the new uh, one here. This looks fairly similar. Um, no, it's completely different. That's an LNER livery. Oh, like I know. Yeah, yeah. 
But the other locomotives that are running, because it's Salsa Fest tonight, so the idea was that we wanted, um, you know, people pick the theme on the Monday Club Facebook page, and people voted by the masses for Salsa Fest. Did give you guys a choice, but uh, Salsa Fest. Is it an Alka Salsa? No, it's not. Salsa. It's um. It's a, a, an engine and pump manufacturer. <laughs> um, so anyway, we've got a class uh, 45 is running around with an eclectic mix of uh, chocolate and cream Mark 1s and then a trio of maroon liveried uh, Gresley Teaks. Uh, we've also then got um, there's the Sutton Locomotive Works class 24 in two-tone green livery uh we've also then got a backman class 25 i think it's a 25 one uh which is 25052 that you might remember from when i did the stay alive video has got the largest of the dcc concepts stay alive in which actually makes it an incredible performer now um and it's funny actually when i turn the power off to the layout and um, the the actual lights on the locomotive keep glowing for about 10 minutes because the, as they slowly use down the power in those capacitors. So that's flying the flag for class 25s. And then uh, running around on the innermost line, we have a Hellion class 26 in the guise of 26008. Uh, and that's in, I think it's, it's um, um, rail freight metal sector livery, or it could be coal sector livery. Never quite sure. Um, there's, there's obviously people who are very much more than know. We take one glance and I go, oh yes, actually, didn't you know? It's, uh, it's well, this you one. you can't know everything, Jen. Um, um, 5735 Northern Princess says, Jen, what's the problem with the lighting on the LNER coach? Don't the lights work with the wand? Uh, we seem no. to have an electrical contact problem, don't we? Yeah, uh, so basically, if I... Um, it, no... <sighs> There's no problem with the power to the track. So if I go to, um, it's not really going to show up on this. So there's the coach. And um, we're coming in with the wand. And I can actually hear the, the little um, switch clicking, but no lights come on. So there's a, a wiring issue somewhere. My guess is that there is a fault uh, between the um, somewhere probably in the bogies, uh, and there's probably either a dry solder joint or just a, a contact that's not making contact. Uh, but that's the problem with the dynamometer car. So as you can imagine, it's like oh, and because rails of Sheffield have sold out, um, it's not like they can give you a replacement. Yeah, and so uh, I've sent them a message. And I'm uh, going to see what they say. But I just started recording the um, the review of that today. And uh, obviously couldn't proceed because um, there was a, an issue. Uh, Millen's Mighty Models. Big hello to you. Says I'm watching while building the layout. Uh, Tom McKee asks, did you finish the whiskey during the break? No, I didn't actually. The uh, whiskey is oh, still here. Oh, has got an interesting idea for this. Huh? Sounds like it might be a loose wire or two of the wheel sets are reversed. Oh, right. So ha when you say two of the wheel sets are reversed... Polarity. Reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Of the electron flow. Um, I, I don't want to mess about, I'll be honest with you. Um, no, it's not, a not until you've talked to Rails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gary Lewis says, With the chilly weather too cold in the loft to watch tonight's chat, the cat decided it's too chilly to go out. So it's who can get the best spot on the settee. The well, cat will always win. The cat will find the best spot. However, yeah. if you sit in the best spot, the cat will sit on you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but as the cat is warm, that's no bad thing. In fact, actually, tonight might be a good night for us to break out the uh, hot water bottle. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We got if a hot water to. bottle for Christmas. Yes. I really want to use it. Yeah, Jen's uh, sister knows that I do enjoy camping, mm. but we have a tendency to be quite cold. Yeah. So she's got us a hot water bottle for Christmas with a furry mm. case, and it is so nice. Oh, now here's interesting. <laughs> Ham Shackleton suggests neodymium magnets can damage the bearings because it pulls the armature off centre. Which Although is a with fair a point, but with a ring field magnet, it is literally a ring 
So it's completely surrounding the armature. So I would have thought that that would pull it equally in all directions. Um, why, why has my chat just disappeared? There we are. Um, right, Ron B suggests you can use the CD motor instead. The Angel Share Model Railway says, Good evening, Jen and Zoe, all in chat. Um, Andy1962 says, Check out Strathpetherford Junction on YouTube for alternative motors to Ringfield Motors. Um, Naive Gage says, Since the start of this year, I've not been able to get cork anymore. What's wrong? Because of the European trade freight situation. I'm thinking I have to stop selling it now. Oh, sorry to hear that. What's wrong? Matt the Dragon Wheel Railway says, sir. Not long ago, a Triang Jinty came to him, smashed to pieces by Hermes. Oh, man. I think in that kind of situation, you are legally allowed, and it would be understood, to challenge the driver to a duel. Yes. I demand satisfaction, sir. <laughs> uh, J. Paul Anderson says, Jen, talk about Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Oh, how does it Muttley goes? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't do much. Oh, Gartian says it's not about polarity. Uh, if there are two wheel sets the wrong way around, there is. Uh, should, oh, well, you'll be at home. I'm just yawning. And oh, right, I'm and with you. So one side only. So that would mean that uh, only power is coming from one rail. Um. You'll have to have a look and see. I don't I, think it's something that you can. I do don't. There, there's, there's, no, they're, they're um, split axles, so that they're they're picking up from both sides. I can see the power connectors. On the bogies. I don't think that is the issue. I bet it's a loose wire. It probably is. Oh my goodness, the mm. amount of detail that's on that thing. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's a gorgeous coach. It is, yeah. Um, and they're, they're not cheap. £149, it, it must yeah. be said. Um, but, you, but there is a lot of features for that money. It's uh, made by Rapido Trains for uh, the National Railway Museum and Rails of Sheffield. Uh, Ronald Moritz says you can replace the motor with a CD tray motor. Right, yeah, for, uh, the replacement for the um, the Ringfield motor. Um, right. <laughs> uh, James Pett says, ah, Saltzer, I was DCC fitting N-Gage Class 47s only yesterday evening. <laughs> uh, Michael Pollitt says, hi Jenny, my uncle was an ex-fireman at Newton Heath and an ex uh, and an engine who built Class 7 Britain's 5-inch gauge and five other locomotives. When he passed away, they were sold at auction. Oh, sorry. Sorry oh. about that. Um, Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase, Class 45. Love a good peep. Um, uh, I think I'm well behind here. I've only just reached um, 57305 Northern Princess's comment. Um, a lot of people talking about CD and DVD motors. What is that for? Replacement for what? The Ringfield motor. Ah, right. Um, right. Uh, Garthian suggests that's coal sector by the look of it. Which, where's it gone? Where has it gone? Um, basically, it's, uh, imagine a yellow square with four black squares uh, rotated by 45 degrees stacked in a uh, sort of a diamond pattern. And that's what it's got on it. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Garthian also has some intermittent lighting problems on his. Peter Reed says he's got his Steiner car today, opened it and it looks beautiful. He's hoping to not have the same lighting issue, but he hasn't tested it yet. Yeah, I mean, the, Fingers crossed for the you method there, is it's weird. They give it this lighting wand, it's like a magnet on a stick. And can you I can just ask, Jen, yeah. would that work on that other thing that Hornby sent with the magnet? This may well work on the Hornby coaches as well. I'll be honest with you, I haven't checked it. Just, um, I'm thinking that would be very useful in an exhibition. Yeah, you know, potentially. On and off at a, at, a, at a bit of range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I can hear the little switch clicking when I pass it across. So I really think it's just a loose wire. Yeah, but it, it's uh, it's beyond loose because there's not even a flicker out of it. It yeah. has to be said. Uh, right, Mon Ronald Moritz says, if it's an... Alka Seltzer, does it bring express relief? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Naive Gage has a question that I think you'll enjoy. Okay. How do I get started with buying sound decoders? Do I first choose the decoder hardware and then get the sounds loaded onto it, or do I choose the sounds first and buy the decoder that it comes on? Um, a bit of both. You tend to buy decoders. Generally speaking, you you can buy decoders 
with the sound file already loaded onto them. Um, a lot of retailers, um, and certainly the um, um, specialists with the sound stuff, will offer something like, say, for example, just for example, the ESU Lock Sound 4, and it will say, you know, uh, for a class 25, class 45, class 37, and it will list the different sound files for the, that are preloaded. So you basically just want to say, I want this decoder with this sound file, and they just send it to you. You can get decoders reblown, they call it, which is where you have a different sound file uploaded onto it. But I've never had to do that, it must be said. Um, you can also buy, if you want to go right into the budget end, um, some people don't like them, other people swear by them. Uh, but the Hornby TTS decoders are a very cheap way at dabbling at uh, sound fitting as well. Uh, and they come preloaded for a particular type of locomotive. I would say that by and large, um, a lot of people consider the speakers to be absolute garbage on those. So it's possible if you get one and you think, I'm not so keen on the sound from that, do consider upgrading the speaker because actually the sound files on the decoders are quite good, uh, just let down by a very cheap and nasty speaker a lot of the time. Uh, not always. Um, for example, the Class 20. Uh, I've got a completely stock Class 20 speaker and uh, TTS decoder setup. And actually, it sounds blooming marvellous. I'm really impressed with that one. So who would you say talks to first? What? For the, for the sound thing. Who do you think, who would you say you should talk to first? Um, just for, just getting into it. Um, there are specialists. Um, you can buy um, things like ESU lock sound decoders with the sound files preloaded onto them from retailers. I've seen them on rails of Sheffield, seen them on Hatton's. If you talk as well to some of the smaller retailers like Tim over at Arcadia Models in Shaw, um, he'll be able to help. Any, any knowledgeable local model shop will be able to provide advice and guidance on the matter. So yeah, they'll get you score on that. Definitely. Um, so that's probably one of the best places to uh, look into. Um, if you're wanting to try out and see whether sound is for you, um, a lot of people do find that actually they find the sounds a bit tedious, it's not for them, which I, I wouldn't say I'm like firmly in that camp, but I, as you can hear now, I don't tend to run things with sound. I find that they become quite monotonous. If you're going to leave trains just running, a lot of the time I'm happy without sound fitting. I don't go out of my way to sound fit all my locomotives. I do have quite a few sound fitted, uh, but for me, it's not the be all and end all. But then there's other people who will sound fit every locomotive in their fleet. And if you're going to be doing a lot of things like shunting, then a sound chip really will come into its own. You're making full use of the different sounds. It won't become monotonous. Uh, and you can get a lot of enjoyment out of that if shunting trains is the sort of thing that you really like to do. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of people in the, the chat are saying TTS sounds, they work fine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Keith Pointer says, hi from uh, Cannock Railway Club. Uh, big hello to you. Great to have you in as well. Uh, yeah, Andy1962 says, I have had a dynamometer car for about two years. No issues. Suspect dry joint loose wire. I think you're probably right. Yeah, I really do think so. Mark says, Jenny, do you run the layout with full sounds on? I can confirm she does not. No. Um, Jen likes the clicky clacky of the rails, don't you? A little bit. Right. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Don gets model railways. Hi to you. The CD drive thing is replacing the motor from an old Hornby or Lima model right. with the motor that opens and closes the CD drive tray. It's the same kind of flat form factor. I did it to a Lima 73. Well, um, works, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Roger Walston home and Mark Wilson both confirmed that black diamonds are coal Of course, black diamonds. That's what it means. Yo, know, coal's referred to as black diamonds. Is it? Yeah, it's a nickname for coal. Oh. That's actually now you've pointed it out and it's clicked in my head. That's actually a very clever logo. Oh, oh. Uh, right. Uh, thank you, Flymo Chairman One, for sharing the Facebook group. Um, Jude Hockenhull says, uh, hello, if you know Zach Farnworth, I know him very well. Yes, we do. Zach Farnworth is my, uh, oh, well, our nephew. 
Yes. Um, so yes, we know Zach Farnworth very, very well. Yes, we we know all the jokes as well and all the little uh, things that he <laughs> thinks we don't. <laughs> Shane's Train says, hello, Jen. Greetings from Ohio. Uh, greetings to you. Ohio uh, Kazimas. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> You don't live anywhere near Woodstock, Ohio, do you? Because I, I, I gather some stuff's been going down there. It's only 300 people live there, but two of them got arrested because they were the, the people who got all wrapped up in storming the Capitol building. Silly, and silly people. Silly people, one of whom I you knew see. way back. Yeah. Um, it's quite they disappeared, now we know why. Yeah, they, um, they dropped off the radar in 2016. And um, they drop back onto the radar with a bang, should we say. Yes. Map the Dragon Railway says, My 94XX arrived last week and it's a cracking locomotive. Now, I've seen that. So in fact, actually, that is some of the other news that I had for you guys. Is that um, actually the 94XX has proved so popular that a number of retailers are reporting that the, um, the DC ready ones, I, the, the ones which don't come pre fitted with sound, have sold out to pre-order so oh I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with that um it's been a long time in coming the 94xx i think it's like six years that it was announced ago it, it's been in the making a long time a bit like the uh, uh 24 with the head code box we had to wait a long time for that but it has finally turned up and proved actually it's, it's um surprised me actually um i didn't realize it was going to be that popular i might have pre-ordered one um, but uh, I missed out on the 1P, uh, the, the Midland Railway 1P, and it seems I've missed out on the 94XX as A well. 1P? That sounds cheap. Uh, yeah, or 1P of it. It, it's um, a power classification. I can't miss a joke like that, Jen. I'm a comedian. I know you... Oh, you're a comedian, you say? She thinks she's a comedian. I am. <laughs> I've done stand-up show and everything, so sure. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, James Hardy says the Bankman birdcage coaches are expensive. You're telling me? I mean, they were expensive. When, uh, the ones that are going round, uh, oh, they're over there now. And the ones that are going round. Over... Angle for a no, while. I've just changed it now. The um, I have to say, the birdcage coaches that are going around, they were when they very first released, and I think they were about fifty-two pounds, something like that each. And I can remember buying them and thinking this may well be the last brand new Backman coaches I buy. And um, so far I've been right in that. I haven't bought a brand new Backman coach at full RRP since then. Uh, they are beautiful coaches, don't get me wrong. I really do love them. And even though there are six more in Southeastern and Chatham Rail livery that Backman have subsequently brought out, I think they're going for, uh, I can find them for about £72 each. And when you think they, they run in, in triplets, so you, you have um, um, two uh, birdcage ends and then the, the one in the middle for each set, they, they don't tend to do them singly. Uh, it, it becomes a very expensive rake of coaches. In fact, it makes a full rake of something like Project Genesis coaches or the Hornby four and six wheelers seem like a steal by comparison it must be said now uh, somebody did ask about news about the Hatton's project genesis coaches i've not heard of any problems with those uh we're still on for i think it's a q2 release for those don't quote me on that um but um in all honesty I i've said this before um there is definitely a solid market for both the hornby ones and the Hatton ones what I am a little concerned about, and it'd be nice if uh, Hattons were able to uh, clarify and dispel any potential issues, is, is whether the Project Genesis coaches will be definitely free of the ailments that have afflicted the O-Gage Gresley coaches, certainly the first two batches that have come through. Uh, what we need to see from Hattons really is a commitment that they will be very much on top of the quality control because I, I think that um, it's going to be less forgiving with a, comp a direct competitor in Double O. Those Project Genesis coaches do need to be of a very high standard, mm. is my opinion. 
Uh, we've got 405 people in. Don't forget to tickle that like button and do consider sharing the stream because it does really help the channel and subscribe as well if you haven't already done so ring the bell and if youtube is in the mood it will tell you about new videos as and when they go but only if it feels like it mm. it's a very very fickle deity yeah garthian <laughs> says they're worth the money though i have two full sets these are the secr bird cages uh, garthian has got one in SECR and one in Southern Railway. Oh, what's the I, really nice ones that have gone around now? Yeah, there's just three of them. They're uh, really nice. They are, but they're, I think to buy the new version to those is £72 Ooh. per coach. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so you're looking at, what's that? That's like over 200 quid for that. Um, which is, I, I'm sorry, I'm out. Um, when, when you get into that kind of price, you've got to think... Do, do I, I need it? Well, not just do I need it, but... Uh, can I put it on my insurance? Um, yeah, and that is a good point, actually, that you do need to bear in mind. as you, you, It's very easy over a number of years to amass quite a valuable collection, and you've got to consider things like insurance. And if you think, oh, well, you know, it's all up in my loft, and like nobody can get up there, and who's going to go up there burglary and next is the issue that you want to worry you're about. You're not insuring against burglary. You're insuring against total loss of something indiscriminate like a fire and yeah. that's what you've got to tell yourself it's things like your contents insurance and i know we've gone through this little chat before but, it's but it really is important um one of the issues and i think a lot of people don't realize this uh, if for example say you have um contents insurance of twenty thousand pounds and you have five thousand pounds worth of um, stuff stolen but the insurance company notices that you've got a hundred thousand pounds worth of contents and you think that includes your carpets your clothes your kitchen utensils all that kind of stuff your furniture then they might say well you're underinsured you've got one fifth of the insurance that you're supposed to have so effectively You've only insured one fifth of twenty percent of your your thing. So when the burglars nicked stuff, only twenty percent of that was insured. So here's your thousand pounds. So you can be deemed by an insurance company to be underinsured, and that is it's probably the one. that that's probably the biggest risk. Um, so you've got to be ever so careful. And if you think like, oh well, you know, I just won't tell them what I've got. They'll look. Insurance companies have claims adjusters that are paid and trained to spot these things. So I'm telling you now, they're looking for a reason not to pay out everything. Of course they are. It's a business. Yeah. To them, it's a business. To yeah. them, it might be a lifeline. Not to them. They don't care. Big hello to Shane's Trains. Uh, Ham Shackleton says, ESU lock sound usually put on the ad available on request. Which means when you put the order in, they take an empty decoder and load the sound files onto it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Wamgok says, I've never had a problem with TTS or speakers. Yeah, I, I've not had a problem. You see here the sounds. But what I'm saying is that um, I've sometimes ha had um, a speaker that just... The speakers are very cheap on the TTS. Sometimes they work just grand. But occasionally you'll find sometimes the sound quality is not very good. And it is dramatically improved, believe me, by fitting a more upmarket speaker. Uh, Wolfy Wolf, big hello to you. Barry Turner, Jenny, is all your rolling stock stored on your layout or do you store them elsewhere? Now, a lot of my rolling stock is stored on my layout. Um, there's obviously, um, if we go to, um, let's try, is this... Yeah, if we go to this angle, um, you can see there, there is a lot of rolling stock sat on the layout. But underneath the layout, um, probably about um, half of the layout underneath it is filled with store, like just solid packed side to side all the way around. Long, long storage signs. I think it's about 14 parallel roads, the longest of which is able to hold a 15 coach train. And it is absolutely full. Um, I think I worked out there's about 300 um, coaches down there in the fiddle yard. There's a lot of stuff. 
And then I've got trays and trays and trays of stuff stored off the layout, but up here in this room. So we've got trays with locomotives in, trays with rolling stock in. There is a lot of stuff. Um, we've also got, I know that uh, when you watch some of the videos, you can just see above my head a line of locomotives. And I've, I've done a full tour recently of my locomotive collections. You can see just the amount of stuff that's up here. Um, so I'd say probably, uh, we've probably got maybe a quarter of my rolling stock is able to fit on the, the actual visual part of the layout at any one time. And I would say maybe 10% of the, 15 to 10% of my entire locomotive collection will as a rule be on the layout because I've got a lot of locomotives. I think uh, at last count I've got about 260 or 265 locomotives, which is, I, I'll admit it, it's an awful lot. Uh, Farmer Channel 1 says, are we going to roll a video address this week, Zoe? Uh, to be honest with you, I think we've got enough videos for this week. Yeah, because we had a few carry over from yeah, last week. Yeah, and that's week. why I haven't said it, because mm. uh, I don't want people to think that uh, they have a chance of getting on tonight. Mm. They might not. So I thought, let's just leave it this week. We'll use what we've mm. got, and then we'll uh, start uh, going again like, next week. Uh, Tico360, hi to you. Um, Garthian says, I've used you choose for a lot of my sound chips. Can be expensive, but they do make sure you have the right chip for the loco. Uh, Shane's train suggests there are hobbyists that write custom sound files as well. Google search them, there's lots to see. Uh, big hello to 1701, the filed flyer. Um, Ron B says, I think the lighting functions are more interesting. So I'm going to agree with you in part there. I do like some of the lighting functions where um, manufacturers have actually made good use of them. A really good example of that would be something like the Daypole class 122 and 121 rail cars, where I think there's about five different lighting functions in use on the one model. And I think it's absolutely great. Um, and I, I like to see that kind of clever usage of the DCC auxiliary functions. For me, the selling point on DCC is actually not having to have lots of isolating sections on the layout and the freedom for any train to roam anywhere on the layout without having to um you know kind of plot its route through excuse me with isolating sections and to have to negotiate the other trains that might be on the layout at the same time um yeah, Michael Pollock, don't worry about it. It says, um, hi Jenny, sorry about my text. You just read out predictive text, put the wrong words in the wrong place. I could see the confused look on your face. Um, Math and Steam Railway says, don't oh. worry about confusing Jenny. She has to live with me. It, yeah, yeah, easily confused. <laughs> um, Math and Steam Railway says, Hornby TTS is pretty much a great system for a beginner. Definitely, yes. I use this system exclusively at the moment. I love them. Yeah, and I love TTS too. I'm a big advocate of them, uh, uh, of this. And, um, you know, genuinely, I think that they are one of the best value for money sound decoders on the market. There's a good choice of them. And not for every type of locomotive. I would love to see them bring out uh, one to suit their class 25 uh, would be great selfishly because basically I'd buy that and stick it in Backman class 25. Um, the class 55 has finally been announced with uh, a sound decoder and uh, I think a lot of those are going to get stripped out and put in other class 55s. Um, I'd love to see the class 42 and the 52 and also their first generation DMU. Um, I think that would be a great TTS sound chip. Now, hopefully Hornby do make a reasonable profit on those sound chips. So it could be a very profitable sideline. Uh, Ron B says, Pico offer locos with a lot of lighting functions for not a lot of money. Interesting. Uh, Pete Clark says, I'll stick with DC as I can hear the clickety-clack can't with sound on DCC. Well, yeah, but you're hearing all the clickety-clack here now, and this is a layout running on DCC. 
Oh, we're going to have to do something about that camera. That is actually it quite is. a nasty it's, it's flicker. Get, right, so I'm going to just else. change the camera. I know a few people, it does induce headaches. So sorry about Fair that. Uh, Cooper and District Model Railway Club. Sound is good for a home layout, but they tend to be drowned out at exhibitions, whatever they are. Yeah, and sometimes you go to exhibitions and all you can hear is this steady drone of like, like my, my class 37 is significantly louder than yours. And they just sit there with them idling all the time and it can get monotonous. I, I do agree with you. Um, right. Hawk Moon 03111951 asks, Can anyone tell me why my rails are always black, even if cleaned the previous day? Um, no. That would appear to be that your locomotives are leaving dirt. So I'm just looking at this. I've got a bit of an issue. The Class 26 is struggling a bit. Oh. Um, let's just see. Can we uh, get a bit more power through that one? Um that would suggest you've got oil somehow getting onto the wheel faces. If your wheels are dirty, it doesn't matter how often you clean your track, the wheels will then put dirt back down on the track. So it may be a case that your um, locomotive and rolling stock wheels are somewhat dirty. Uh, Wolfie Wolf says, I had a sneaky peeky that you were going to talk about the, the dyno today. Yeah, well, um. I did publicly put a post up to say I'd bought one. So, um, yeah, it was only a matter of time. Um, ah, Hawkmoon03111951 says, even if I haven't run any trains in between. Um, that doesn't sound normal. It could be some kind of oxidation. I don't yeah. know. The only answer I could give is oxidation for that one. J. Paul Anderson says, ha ha ha, Jenny familiar with QAnon folks. Right, no, no. There's somebody that I knew very well back in 2005 through to about 2016 when they just dropped off the radar. And they weren't a nut job back then, I have to say. Um, but they disappeared off the radar. And I've been just like intermittently just checking to see if I can find them, just to make sure they were all right. And I was quite surprised to see them pop up on CNN. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you would be, wouldn't you? Because that's not really yeah, normally as, kind of as one of the the first three ringleaders to be arrested for storming the Capitol building. Yeah, and it's know, like they, uh, my friends used to be on Live Journal, and uh, next time I saw them, they were committing treason. It's not the normal. It's, thing ki it's kind of weird. So, um, if anybody knows Jessica Watkins, tell her that she's been very naughty. <laughs> and very, but, very silly. But yeah, it turns out she was living in Woodstock, Ohio, uh, running a bar. Um, Flymo Chairman 1 says, uh, it's possibly damp or some older track will do that. It could be actually, your track could be steel and you're getting uh, condensation maybe depending on where your, um, uh, where your layout is. Mm. Um, Madden Steam Railway says, what is your next locomotive going to be? Mine's going to be Tornado, the railroad model with TTS sound. Um, I recently bought, um, uh, you've seen, I've, sh I've shown you the uh, Oxford Rail N7 with, uh, surprisingly enough, ESU Lock Sound version 4 sound in it. The review of that has been filmed. That should be going out on Wednesday. Um, it's still downstairs because the cupboard monkey's not taken photos of it. Um, but actually, somewhere in the post, and this is for a future video, um, there is a Hellion Class 15 on its way. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're finally going to be adding a Class 15. Are you all right there? You pulled yeah, funny fine. face. It's all right. Um, so we're finally going to be getting a Class 15 um added to the fleet now i just want to check something here uh, i just want to check um because uh robert steers very kindly did send some money earlier on through the paypal.me link so i'm just going to quickly check and just make sure somebody else has sent anything that i can uh, yeah not that you're uh, suggesting they should you're just making sure no uh because i want to be able What's to thank people click, click? sounded like uh something well no sounded that like they come off the no the... no 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 that's the clickety clack of it going across the uh, uh, the rail joints. Daniel's double O model railway says, why is the class 25 with the wagons not running? Um, class 25 with the wagons? It Which, is, isn't it? 
Oh, no, they mean this one. Oh, um, it's a shuttle. Well, no, it's not. It's just sat there. It's, oh, it's just parked. It is parked. Yeah. Um, is it? I don't think it's a class 25. No, that's the 24. It's uh, the Batman similar, though, 24. Yeah, because that's the tw class 24, but with the head code box. Right. Um, I think I am okay, well... It's about uh, seven minutes, and we start on the uh, on the videos. I'm about 20 minutes behind on the... Oh, my God. Oh, God, yeah. nobody's... You're supposed to keep me honest on this. like I'm able to keep you doing anything. Right, I've skipped forward. If I so, tell you to um, do something, you do something else. Yep. You know what you're like. Tom McKee says, Clive, my dad, worked on the Ulster Prince, Belfast to Liverpool. I travelled with him at weekends as I had an uncle in Liverpool. Oh, excellent. Um, Mark Wilson, no, not Donald Trump. Uh, if you check the news, Jessica Watkins... No, Donald Trump wasn't storming the Capitol. No, no. <laughs> I like transport. Says I'd like a class one five three TTS decoder and class eight hundred. Um, yeah. Um, I, I there's there's a lot of scope for TTS decoders. It has to say. Oh, lots of people. Right, Richard Swiderski, Barry Turner, Josh's. Oh no, Josh train room has. But um, Ham Shackleton, uh, Garthian, of course, have all spotted. They've all spotted the TARDIS. Yeah, actually, it's quite obvious. So Well, I have to make it obvious sometimes so people can <laughs> have a chance. Definitely. Uh, John Nutman says, don't forget, guys, click the like button. Definitely tickle that like button. Like because, the click button. Because every time you click the like button, it makes me happy. Now, I'm smiling like a Terminator there. Right, um, Vic Freak. I still haven't seen a sound-equipped steam locomotive with a realistic exhaust bark. They just sound synthesized chuff. Um, I, I think actually one of the, the sound chips I was very impressed with is the sound decoder in the Rails Terrier. I've got Box Hill, and that's really got that, that characteristic Terrier bark, which is one of the reasons that they're nicknamed Terriers. And that is the reason that they're nicknamed Terrier. Um, so that is quite good in my opinion. Um, right, uh, somebody said as well, uh, yeah, J. Paul Anderson said, did you hear Larry King died? Yes, I did. Yeah, that was so, uh, um, unexpected. Yeah, well, he was quite old, but, but uh, yeah. So, uh, Mark Wilson asks, Jenny, are you planning to do any more on the Garden Railway this year? <laughs> uh, yes, planning on a bit of redevelopment to ease the gradients. Quarry Central asks, what software do you use for streaming? That's your department, Cupboard Obs. Monkey. OBS. It, it's, it's cheap because well, it's, it's free, free yeah. and it's basic stuff, but it does work. So, yeah, we use OBS. Um, hotels... And to be honest with you, it's remarkably simple to get set up. You, you really don't even need to read the manual if you're just <laughs> prepared to <laughs> click around and see what happens. Um, right. Um... So, have you got any more questions there? Yeah, oh, loads, loads. Uh, Henry's Transport Adventures and Beyond says the Class 15 will probably end up in the Netherlands. Hang on, you've gone. We've uh, we're what? offline. Are we? Yeah, it's just gone off for me. Chat disconnected, please wait when we try to reconnect you. Um, Has this gone off again? I don't know, is the it? site cannot be reached. Um, no, I'm still online, it seems, on have my I phone. Lost, have I lost Wi Fi on my computer? Uh, my it's phone's all just gone off for me. Uh. Uh, Grongster Model Railway says OBS is the best free streaming software. Yeah, definitely. It really is. Um, yeah, somebody asked about the Thumper. Yes, the Thumper, I think it's a class 205. Uh, it was a diesel right powered rail car. Weird. Right, uh, I just lost the internet there for a bit. Henry's Transport right Adventures and Beyond. Who is Larry King? Oh gosh, you're making me feel old now. Oh no? my goodness. Larry King is an incredibly famous uh, talk show host, interviewer. Radio host is how he started. Um, goes way, way back. First found fame in the 1970s with his Coast to Coast uh, radio show. In the 80s, um, he moved he to CNN guy. and became the guy. He, re he interviewed somewhere in the region of 1,000 plus, if not more, um, different people. Anybody from um, Hollywood stars to presidents, uh, all manner of people in between. So, um, really famous, mm. cameoed in a lot of films as well as himself. Yeah, he was like the guy to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, uh, Tony Wright says, or a Cheshire cat, Jenny. I think that's my Terminator smile. <laughs> uh, Hotel Six says, my newest edition will be an Australian VRJ class. I do like some of those Australian models, that has to be said. 
Uh, Pete Clark laments though, we don't get a chance with a certain TARDIS spotter. <laughs> I'm going to change the angle and we'll see if Doctor Who can move. No, because uh, it's coming up to the end. Oh, with the, uh, oh. the videos are coming up, so oh. yeah. Big hello to Women Model Railway. Darthian says the Daypol A4 is great, recorded from Bitten and sounds like a real A4. David Morton uses Digitrain's decoders for his diesels. Humanicity Junction Model Railroad says, I just hit the like button 30 times. Uh, no, uh, you've got to hit it an, an odd number of times. Otherwise, it, it's like you like it, you press it again, it unlikes it. You press it again, it likes it, and so forth. So if you press it an, an even number of times, you basically remove your like. So it has to be an odd number of times. Uh, Tim Condrup says, I can't wait to get Batman Daisy. Um, Clive Cobold, Tom McNee, uh, every uh, a nice I use go to uh, Belfast to Haysham service in 1960s in the Ulster Express from Keensham, sorry, Haysham Harbour to London Euston. I do miss the Haysham and Stranra service. Uh, right, um, uh, Charles Walsh says Larry King died from complications of COVID. RIP. Yeah. Um, Peter Watson asks, hi Jenny, any updates on your proposed Monday Club magazine you pro proposed a few months ago? That's your oh, department. That back a while. The Monday Club magazine, we haven't, we basically haven't had a, a minute to do anything. We got hit with COVID. Mm. I have uh, so much stuff that I still need to send out to Patreons because we haven't been able to get uh, stuff dealt with. Yeah. So I've had to put the magazine idea right on the back burner, as they say, yeah. because it's just not it's a mess at the moment. Garthian asks, would you ever try weathering an engine, Jenny? I know a certain two-tone green Class 24 that would look great with light weathering. I'm always scared of, of making a hash of it. Especially so, for other people's stuff. Yeah, so I personally would not um, weather locomotives. I've weathered rolling stock quite effectively, but locomotives are a very different thing. Uh, James Long says, evening all, been here all along, but only listening is busy putting stuff on eBay. Um, yeah, it's probably a good time for um, selling stuff on eBay. Hard to buy his market right now. Sorry, sell his market right now. Everyone seems mm. to want to buy everything. Uh, James Hardy asks, what's your most expensive locomotive? Uh, and it's, it's weird, actually. It quite often comes up as a, a matter of interest. People always ask, what's the most expensive thing? It's probably my uh, Backman C class, South Eastern and Chatham Railway, number 592. Um, they were changing hands for up to £500 at one point. Uh, I don't think they're quite that high anymore. Um, but in terms of other rarities, um, I do have the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway Blue 4F as number uh, 58. That's quite an expensive one. The Hellion Bayer Garrett was a, was probably the singular most expensive locomotive I bought. Um, as you know, it beaten probably by my Hornby Double O, um, the new Hornby Double O Duchess of Athol. And before anybody asks, um, no immediate consideration to getting one of the newly announced uh, Hornby Double O models, but never say never. Never. Charlie McGowan says, what cameras do you use? Um, Logitech C270s. Yeah, what she just said. You can said. get others and you can get better, but uh, the issue we have is bandwidth. If we went for a higher grade one, we wouldn't be able to show you it in higher grade. Mm. Uh, New Western Grove says, I'm going to be buying a Backman Class 55, Backman BR Mark 1s in BR Blue and Grey with Scott Rail band branding. I'm also excited as soon as I will be able to use the attic for my model railway. Well, it's kind of like what Attics I did are up great here. For model yeah, railways. they are. They are, especially if you've got a nice big attic. But do be careful. Modern build houses, the attics are not designed to be load bearing, so you have to be ever so careful. You would have to get it professionally reinforced. Mm. Um, but if it's a house like this that was built in the 1920s, you're generally good to go. And you get a nice open space without the roof trusses getting in the way. Yeah. Vic Freak has actually just bought a thumper. Pure nostalgia. <laughs> Crossway Point Junction Burnie. Um, hi to you. Thomas Whittington says, speaking of coaches, is a manufacturer who's going to break the Hornby and Backman monopoly in this area. Yeah, um, a Cura scale. Uh, we've just seen the EPs of the new Mark V coaches. 
and they do look amazing. Now, Mark, the Mark V coach falls well outside the area that I personally like to model, but as a model, I'd love to get a good close look and the chance to review those because I think that they really are a game changer in terms of quality of models coming through. I've never seen a bad model come through from Acura scale. They really do produce some great models. So I'm really looking mm. forward to those. Rivet family asks, is that a dynamometer coach on the track near the bridge? Indeed it is. In fact, I can move that up into shot there. That is, oh, <laughs> and you can see how free ro rolling it is. Um, if I couple it up to that class seven, it won't roll away. Um, yeah, it's one of the Rails of Sheffield dynamometer cars. Um, just bought it, actually. Um, right. Um, J94 says, TARDIS on the Jenny cam. It was. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you did hold it up. Right, I was thinking. That's uh, how far behind you are. I had an entire mm. game of Ticket to Ride after showing the TARDIS to the Jenny cam. That's how far back you are. You are in the yeah, past, okay, you need the okay. to right. get the Well, if you shut up, I can get I going. don't want to. Keith Pointer asks, what's the cheapest wagon you've got on the layout? Oh, that's a different one. Oh, that's an interesting um, question. Uh, probably the... Um, it's, it depends on... Oh, I have stuff that I bought 20 years ago, and I was paying about £4.50 a wagon for the Backman Branch Line 16-ton mineral wagons. More recently, um, I have just bought a load of stuff. I'm going to be doing a video, which um, it's not um, it's not sponsored um, in any way by Hereford Model Centre, but I'm going to be highlighting uh, Hereford Model Centre as an example of a location that you can get some very very competitively priced models. So I have just bought a Hornby Shark in factory weathered load haul livery. And I have paid, um, I think it's £11.80 for it, which is an amazing price. And what I'm going to be doing in that video is highlighting that you can still get new old stock of some really great models out there that won't break the bank. Yeah, you don't want to break uh, mm. the bank. They, um, they tend to get a bit stroppy if you break them. Yeah. They the make you pay for it. Yeah, okay. Um, the Growler Blackwood Engage layout says TMC are the best for weathering. And yeah, actually, I've seen some really good TMC weathering jobs. Uh, it's not cheap necessarily. Um, you know, nothing's really cheap in this life, but they do—they do. Excuse me, they do do a good job. I will say that for them. Hive Ken says I can't wait for my Genesis. Says says says. Um, Genesis. Yeah, Genesis. We've all seen. Star and my Trek. Backman <laughs> Caledonian Railway Blue Macintosh eight one two class. Um, yeah, I I I'm, I'm actually the, I think that's going to be. That and the improved precedent, the, the jumbos, uh, I think they are going to be some of the sleeper hits of this year. Well, they're not really sleep hits because we all know about them. Um, Stevie Film says, I have three short, in inverted commas, flangeway salmons on eBay. Yeah, uh, we talked about that at the beginning. I don't know what's going on there. I really don't. What are you looking at? I am trying to get up a uh, photo that was sent to us which doesn't seem to want to actually load. And every time it's just in Microsoft out, and I'm not, okay, apparently there was a problem. Uh, so, um, Mark Holt sent last week, Monday Club update on JD Custard mm. with an image, mm. and he said, verdict, not as good as Brandy Custard. Unfortunately, the image won't load, so I can't actually show you it, but uh, that's a real shame, because it's like, I don't know what's going on there. Charles Walsh, and this is going back to the insurance question from earlier on, says, hoping you've got good security system. Very much. Security is always at the forefront. You, you can't even get near this house without someone noticing you. Um, yeah, and it, it's one of the things, you've got to have good security. Unfortunately, in this day and age, it's a really great idea for everybody. A uh, big hello to Rail to Rail. Great to uh, have you joining us. And Poshing Tono 1 as well. Uh, Rivet family says hi Jennifer Kirk. Hope I sent email correctly last night to you and Zoe watching while scanning my late granddad's cine what? films. Just What's their name? Uh, Rivet family. Um, um, I don't know. I uh, don't we, know if it's is. if it's been sent, we will we will find that in a moment. So uh, <laughs> don't worry. We we'll be just we're just queuing up the first one. Yes, I think the first got... one is coming from um, David Morton with a quick video from their club. So this is the Loddenvale Model Railway Club 
Um, and uh, so are we ready to go straight over yeah, to this? Yeah, let's, let's go straight into So it. let's go to the first of your videos that have been sent through to zoe at zoerobinson.com. Remember, send only the URL. Do, yeah, do not, not send, send the, the video as, as a file because it will not get yeah, through. I'm constantly now, because people right. keep doing it, getting messages from uh, Google saying that uh, Gmail is full. That's how many uh, videos I've got. I, I simply mm. can't download them. Oh, I do like those coaches. The is that a clerestory? No, it isn't a clerestory in the middle. I'm not quite sure what that, that is. A lovely marble railway. It, it is very nice. Oh, it, there's a lot of interest going on. Oh, and... I like it. Yeah. All the different levels and going up and down. Yeah. Oh, ah, uh, I like these bridges. That oh, I like good. that with the the um, stone viaduct at the back and it then the like good. It looks like Durham, doesn't it? The well, big viaduct in yeah, Durham. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I do like this. That that was very very nice. Thank you very much for sending us that. Yeah, every, um, everyone's saying this looks lovely. Yeah, it does. So thank you ever really so much for sending nice. us that. Um, Garthian so, yes, thank says. Thank you, David Morgan, for that one. Garthian says uh, the Sutton locomotive works class twenty four is the most expensive loco running today. Cost me three hundred and thirty three ju pounds due to being top spec sound plus extra stay alive. My goodness. Um, Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase. Funny thing last week, talking about the Beatles, and I said, never listen to their song. Um, when at work this week, Ticket to Ride was playing over the radio in the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. Tony Wright says, I have the Backman 1P Midland tank locomotive. It's a great model, but not a great puller. Uh, the Hornby M7 does suffer a little bit in that respect. So have we got another video yet? Um, we were going to have one. Uh, give me a moment, uh, because Jeff Hammond sent N1, and, sent, and then said this is an N-gauge layout using DigiKey's uh, DR500 controller. In this video, I show the new signal gantry, um, but there's no video attached. So ah, I right. got confused there because I thought he detached it, but Google had decided that actually what they were going to show me instead was the previous video. Right. So um, that didn't help. Right. Um, uh, Grongston Model Railway has got to head off uh, to care for an elderly parent. So you take care. It's been great having your company. Um, Dave Pippin FB TV Entertainment asks, Jennifer, do you have a train station on your layout? Not on this one, no. Um, I did on the previous layout. I uh, did a model of Bolton Trinity Street Station. So I had a, a five platform station, so four through faces and a single bay platform. I kind of got stations out of my system and I really wanted to build a marshalling yard. So by virtue of that, there's no station whatsoever on this line. Although the more people say, the more I'm thinking about adding a little halt somewhere, one that you know maybe a, a short two coach train can pull in at, probably, in fact, no, certainly on, the uppermost level um, and I'm just looking now at a place thinking oh I could put a little platform there but I don't know I, probably not um, um, it's just one of those things no space for it okay so the next video we've got here is uh, Flint Hills Model Railway this is Jeff Hammond I found the video that he was sending the link to now and this is a December 2020 update mm -hmm. and he's asked uh, when did he ask us to Play this one six minutes seven seconds so if i just jump to that so um flint hills I'll model railway six. jeff hammond okay. here we go so this is flint okay. hills model railway so, with jeff hammond what have we got here oh oh i do like that signal gantry oh, with the color yes. aspects there and this is n-gauge did you say this is an n-gauge mm. uh, layout yes so with he's just done the signal gantry it's nice if you look actually the signals appear to be keyed to where the train is yeah. so as the train's gone past not just that they fully automated interesting I'm, that's really well done i like is that the apt on the right there that's oh i don't oh, know my, about oh, that oh i like that did you see how the um the yeah. signals change and then that first one will go to red at some point they've got lights in the coach it's very well, yeah and then it's the really next well one as they're gone to red yeah. So this is all automated. That's really well done. I am wondering where are these trains going? <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. 
I, I was just waiting for them to come back. And there we go. There, it cleared the right of way. Is that that's not an APT or is that the original livery? Uh, standard the... train says uh, class forty one, the prototype HST, not yes. the APT. Yeah, I recognise it now. Oh, there's there's ones going round on the bottom as well. There's like a there's a lower level. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff going on there. I'm liking this. So are we going to get another tra trains come back in and sort of queue up at the station? I honestly don't know. But I, I am impressed by that signal gantry. Yeah, Ooh. Flint Hill says it's fully automated. Oh, yes, there you go. Yeah, and I like levels. the way, if you look, see how the, the signals are changing as the train's going past. It's really well done. Yeah, uh, and you know, this is some of the really fun stuff you can do with um, electronics and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, going back so into nice. that station. Lots of lighting on this stage. That's a huge station. It what is. have we got? One, wow. two, three, four, five, six. I can see at least six platforms. It's so well done. Yeah. Oh, and there, here comes another one. That's that looks right. Like quite I, a I, steep gradient. Uh, I think it's a, a trick of the angles, but that that's really nice. I'm liking this. Yeah, this is really nice to do. I mean, we can't show it all. It's a 22 minute video, but yeah, that yeah. is an amazing look. Yeah, so um, guys, uh, I would suggest you go and check out the full video. Definitely. So this is Flint Hills Model Railway, Jeff Hammond. Thank you ever so yep. much for I've sharing. I've put this. the link into the chat like oh. the other one. So yeah, I'm very impressed. A big hello to East Midlands Train Spotter 2021. Uh, um, Ma Maro. Kripaldi says hello from Italy. Big that hello to you. That was a really nice uh, Ron B says nice layout. Uh, Richard Swiderski says great signals. Ben Tullet, HSTs everywhere. I do need to get a HST, I think. Uh, Mick Daubney <laughs> says on the right is the original class 252 HST. Um, really nice, yeah. Really uh, um, Ruben Ashwell says nice layout. Uh, really nice. Yeah, so uh, Mick. Dorbany says, notice the NMT has lights on the bogey as the original. Mm -hmm. um, so, brilliant. Thank you for sharing that with us. So, what have we got up next? So, next up, we just have a photo, and it's uh, a nice one from Logan Clary. Uh, it's, uh, all he says is the Monday Club picture. Okay. So, so, we got the TARDIS in there. Have you spotted the TARDIS? I did spot the TARDIS. Uh, did sure we? Oh, else will. oh, oh, oh. And. That silver, silver car, silver grey car, that's a Volvo 740 GL, which is, my first car was one of those, but mine was in like a, a very, very dark metallic blue, um, it was sort of like a, a dark greeny blue grey, difficult to describe, probably more like a darker version of, is that a Ford Escort? Alongside it, that one at the bottom left there, it was more like that colour, but slightly darker and greyer. Um, they but, can't see that. Can they not? No. So what I'm going to do oh, is yeah, just pop I... back over to here and turn you off. You'll break the cameras. So now, right. So now you'll see. see that. Right. Um, the silvery car is the Volvo 740. Now my first ever <laughs> car. Ben Tull says TARDIS by the Blue Transit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Get in before Garthy, and otherwise you've got so, no chance. Yeah, that's a very nice one. Yeah, Thank yeah, you very much, Logan Clary. Right. Do you want to jump back over? Uh, yeah. See if you come back on. So we're gonna see if. Well, yeah, I've turned up. Woohoo! Uh, but the camera in the background has not. So I told you you'd break it. Oh it, well, I'm sorry. I'm not really, but I'm sorry. It wasn't worth you breaking it. Hold on. Yeah, I really didn't want to come back on, did it? There. Right. So hopefully these will now re. Excellent. And I anyway, know you, you. Yeah, that's working. Right, so we... that one's working. And let me just check. I've got six more. And no, it minutes. doesn't. Doesn't want to give us that camera. Okay, well, go to one that does work, and we'll okay. just work with that. Rightio, right. Um... Okay, this one's from J. Paul Anderson. Uh, yeah, it's my model railway. Says Jenny, get the new HST in the blue Pullman livery. It is tempting, it has to be said. Um, I really like the idea of the intercity swallow one. Um, but also, actually, whilst we've got a moment, um, 
it does remind me that uh, next week we're not going to be having a poll for next week's Monday Club. What we are going to be doing is a theme that was suggested last week and that is all of the locomotives that have been sent in and donated to uh, the Weir Yard and uh, these are ones that people have very very kindly um, just sent me to plug gaps in my collection. I'm really eternally grateful for these. So somebody did suggest that I should do uh, a Monday club where we run nothing but those locomotives. So that's what we're going to be doing is the theme for next week. Um, so um, I think probably what we call it is the theme is cherished locomotives. Um, if you want to make videos for next week. So, you know, dig out your favourite locomotives. Ones that mean a lot to you. And uh, we're going to be doing that with the videos. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the uh, the browser. Where's the web browser one? Oh, what you mean? Uh, the no. Just just Browser? Yeah, Web Camera Browser, that's it. Uh -huh. Because I need to turn you back on on that. Oh, yeah, you do. So, you want to turn me back on? Yeah, we are. She's turned me on. <laughs> right. Um, so, I need to turn you back on for that. So, we have another video. Uh, the Garthian does ask, does that include the Garrett? After all the money for it was donated by just one person, Winky Face. Yes. Uh, we'll consider it, um, definitely. But what I would say is that there's, there are other locomotives that haven't really been seen much. So, um, we've got a 9F, a Bankman 9F. We've got uh, a Bankman C-Class in the SECR livery, the newer one. Uh, we've got a Flying Scotsman, which is the uh, railroad with the TTS sound. Uh, we've got a Class 47 from Bankman. It's actually fitted with TTS sound, which was actually donated by a different person, very, very kindly. And that's in Intercity livery. There is a Hornby Terrier in Kenton East Sussex Railway livery. And there is a Hornby B2 Peckett. So that's six locomotives just off the top of my head. I'm really eternally grateful for all of those. There's probably others that I'm missing, but they're the ones that immediately spring to mind. Uh, I know that on certain nights, people uh, kind of went wild with the super chat. And uh, very it kind It was actually quite humbling on those nights. It was. Goodness. Um, especially the night for the Garrett, um, that left me speechless. But there was also... It didn't last. You, we can't get a word in edgeways this week. Yeah, um, but then also there was uh, a night where people very kindly donated the money and we got the 1366 class. Uh, was it 1360 or the 1366 class? The Hellion 060 pannier tank with the outside valve gear. Um, I do remember that one as well, and that again, it's very, very humbling when people do do that. Uh, right, have we got another video? We do. And it's, this one's from J. Paul Anderson, and it's so. an SR station diorama called Trumpington. Ah, time for Trumpington. Do you want to <laughs> press a button? Uh, okay. Like, uh... Does it does it shout fake news? <laughs> <laughs> Eclipse Gaming vids. Hi to you. Mick Daubney asks, do you have a Class 23? No, actually, uh, oh, Class wow. 23 is something that I don't have one of. I was looking at getting one the other day. I, I kind of toyed with it, but I got the Class 15 instead. That's one of the um, P-Class, I believe, from... It looks like a P-Class from uh, uh, Hatton's. Really lovely models. But this is a, like a lovely little diorama. I like that with the uh, embankment. very well done. I do like that embankment with the really rough uh, grass, bushes, and... And uh, a Garthian scene, is that dual gauge track? Actually, it does look it. Oh, I Fully like that. Fully detailed signal box interior. That is nice. It I is. want to do that with the signal box that's at the top of the hump. Yeah. So I took the hump that you can see into it and see that there is nothing in it. Uh, I like that where you can see like the stones just kind of washed down. That kind of rough landscape really, really does impress me. Um, and you know, I would uh, say that kind of slope that's on there would be the perfect one for people like me when I was a kid. We would drag <laughs> a piece of cardboard all the way there from our houses and slide down that slope. No, oh, cardboard. <laughs> would, uh, I, your rails sticking off the end there, though, do strike me as being very dangerous to get caught and pulled off. But yeah, it's a kind of dual gauge track. Oh my so goodness, is this yeah. like uh, Ireland or somewhere? That's interesting. So lots of little details. 
Yeah, and sometimes that's what mm. makes it really. Yeah, definitely. That is so nice. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Richard Swiderski says the signal box is great. Really uh, is. Jay Paul Anderson says yes, dual gauge track. Oh, that is lovely. Um, so what gauges is that representing? Um, um, I believe it's double O. No, no, but the dual gauge track. So yeah, it's a double O gauge. So is that double O nine? Must be. I'm looking at it. I I'm guessing it's double O nine. So, um, that's just really nice. John though. Nutman says that that's nice. Peter Leyland says my signal box portfolio on RM Web is worth a looking re really signal box interiors. Mm. Uh, J. Paul Anderson confirms it's normal and 009. Thank my you goodness, for that. Uh, tonight I've made it sound like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Shanghai oh, 264359. That's fab scenery. It's, it's absolutely so well done. It really, is. really, really impressed by that. Thank you very much for sending that in. Henry's Transport Adventures and Beyond has suggests it's Isle of Wight for the 1936 tube stop. Um, that is a possibility, but uh, no, I think J. Paul Anderson did say it's um, uh, 00 and 009. Um, interesting, actually, because I don't think there is actually or was anywhere, particularly in the UK at least, where um, narrow gauge and um, standard gauge was dual gauged in that way. Now, I could be completely wrong on that. Uh, the only dual gauge, as it were, that I can think of in the United Kingdom was the old broad gauge and standard gauge. Um, it's the only thing I can think of. So the next one we've got, oh, this is Rivet Family, model of Bungay Railway Station. So yes. um, th I think this is the one that somebody was asking about if we'd got. Well, we have. <laughs> so we've definitely got Rivet uh, uh, Family's uh, video. So yeah, we're just making that Bungay full screen. So, so we're, we're we go. good. Oh, I know. This is uh, if you can read this, you don't need glasses. This line was opened in stages. The first section between Tivatar and Harleston was opened the 1st of December 1855, and the line reached Bungay in 1860. So we're going to jump forward from that because mm -hmm. you guys will not be able to read that. So uh, a lot of it at the start is photographs of the actual place. Interesting. Enough, Garthian oh. says Welshpool had dual gauge track near the um, the SG station. Um, so oh, a, lot, a lot of the start is the photos to show oh, you. Oh, I mean, this is always nice to see. Um, stop messing about. Sorry, I've put it into the uh, oh. chat so people can have a look because uh, that, that way we can go through it. Right. There's a lot of history about the station. So, so it was closed in 1960. Uh, parts lingered on until 1964. So, um, so now I'm going to jump further mm. in because here's the model itself. Simon Train's model railway showcase says yes there is definitely a narrow gauge and standard gauge diamond crossing in Portmatic but it's not dual gauge. Um, Richard Swiderski oh, asks goodness. who's been watching Get Carter? It isn't actually Get Carter. You, what you'll have seen it there it's suggesting Get Carter. It's a soundtrack because, isn't it? Uh, it's something to do with the soundtrack. Yeah I was, I was watching How something. How good does that look? That is great. Wow. Uh, so we've got a bit of information that goes with it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is based on Bungay Railway Station on the old Waveney Valley line on the Norfolk Suffolk border. Mm. When I was at school, at school, I grew up around Bungay. So after building several fictional layouts near the all end to end, I started building my model last year, which offers continuous running. Continuous running is always good if you want to sit back it's and based just watch. It's a trend. sixteen by ten foot shed. So. So a Plenty reasonable of amount of space. That is a lovely looking. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we've got is that a J15? One of the Hornby J15s going around, which of course, obviously for the Great Eastern Railway, it's the perfect choice. Yeah, that's a J15. I do like your bird's eye containers. I think they were done as a um, special commission for TMC, weren't they? Could be wrong on that. Um, Certainly, uh, they do look good. I like your signals. It's really well done. And apparently, on the walls of the shed are the photos of the real thing. Excellent. So, always nice to be able to compare while you're working. Definitely, definitely. I Everyone's do like... saying this is a lovely mm. layout. I'm looking at... I, I like the signal as well. Um, one of the things I'm thinking of adding to Weir, Weir Yard, it must be said, is working semaphore signals to replace some of the ratio non-working kits. 
Um, so I, I, I've currently at the moment got a, a bit of a, an eagle eye for um, uh, semaphore signals. You know, Ben Tollett, you're absolutely right. There have been some great layouts tonight, and this is another mm. excellent one. It Thank looks you. wonderful. The way that it goes for the depth and then it just feeds into the background, mm. it just looks real from what I'm seeing. It's really nice. Mm. Tom McKee, it's been great having your company. You take care, and hopefully see you next week. Um, um, also, a lot of information came in with uh, with this video. Uh, it's saying that there's an awful lot of local uh, carriages, the the goods wagons. Uh -huh. so it's for local companies, so it'll all be yeah. So there'll be run. private owner wagons lettered up for local businesses. It's one of the things I tried to get for when um, I had the railway in the shed doing Bolton Trinity Street. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of an eagle eye for any local wagons. Oh, you did. That's why you've got a Bolton bus and things like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also I've got the... Um, Which would look out of place in Weir Yard. <laughs> i got a, a Scowcroft fa um, Farmworth wagon, and I also managed to get a Scholes wagon from Bolton. Um, you, Jen, we have a decision to make now. We have four left. They came in today. They're not last week's. So we've gone through all of last week's. So we have four left. Do we want to play them? Or yeah, save let's them? keep going. Let, let's keep let's going. juice box these now. Excellent. Sounds I good do to like me. the farm machinery. That's so well done. I, I like that big the ransom thresher. It's really nice. Local wagons for local people. Says <laughs> I was thinking that. I didn't want to say. Um, okay, so let's uh, jump off then because uh, if, okay. we, if we're going to keep going, we'll need to keep going. Uh, <laughs> um. Right, that was uh, really well done, though. So Andy's heading off, Nikki's heading off. You guys take care. Uh, hopefully, see you next week. Michael Pollitt says, "Hi, Jenny. You must have heard of the main news this week, and the good news: the reopening of two railway lines that have been closed for fifty years." I did hear something about that, uh, although um, ho hopefully they'll. Um, um, I don't know how long it's going to be before they reopen. Um, uh, 1701 the file flyer says ICI burn nays. Yeah, that, that line they've been wanting to reopen that for about 20 30 years Theo me hi to you my pet lizard Kings Dragoon Guardsman rides in my daypole trucks on the small layout And it's hilarious because he just sits and watches then he tries to escape and when I stop he tries to eat my scenery <laughs> mm. Aren't pets lovely? Oh, yes, Jen you will adore this one. This is a very up-to-date video from Chris's trains and it's oh, uh, yes, um, American passenger and freight trains. You oh, always really, love the I do. difference for these, don't Just you? quickly, uh, 1701, the file flyer says it's the Ashington line. Yes, that's right. So the line is still open. You want to hit play? Yeah, sure. The line is still open, but it's been freight only since the 60s. Oh. So what's actually happening is the passenger uh, line is being reinstated. I always love this layout. We've seen it a few times, haven't we? Is this the one that we saw in its Christmas <laughs> yeah. guys? Yeah. So it's always always good to see um, see this layout. It's such it, it's a fun layout. It's with lots a, a layout for someone who really loves. Uh, it's got good play value. Trains. Good play value. Oh, I like you got the collection of woodies there. The uh, wood panelled station wagons. How is that is that Amtrak livery? I'm, it just flashed by. I'm not um, I'm not an aficionado of the American stuff. That looks like a chassis system lift. Oh, look, it, look, it's smoking. There's a smoke <laughs> unit in the diesel. That was a European uh, mm. one. Uh, oh, look, 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 the campfire. That is oh, actually, that I, is I love great. stuff like that. Because I fitted some over there. You right? did, you never I, use it though. No, 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 yeah, when we do trains going by, I must remember to switch them on. I like this, the foreground there with the, uh, the Airstream trailer as a burger van. This is really nice with all the lighting effects. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm liking this. This is nice. Oh, it's really well done. Oh, and they've even got, they're using a car park to display all the dinky toys. That is that actually is a really great good. idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, Garthian says the 29th of this month marks 50 years since the Bala to Blenai Fistiniog branch closed. There is a project to open to Transfineth going on. Um, yeah, um, I'm really hopeful that they can get to do something with that. Oh, a Class 8! Daypole Rock Class 8! I think it's a Daypole Class 8, Rocks. and that's one of the Hatton's Warwells, and that's a Daypole pillbox brake. Really great um, O-gauge stuff there. It's, it's weird, I, I must admit, it's slightly weird to see 
UK outline stuff on, on a, an American layout. Oh. So Gronk's on tour. Fly in the Gronk's flag. on tour. Yeah. So, um, I really like that. One. See Chris you later, strange. Leslie great Gilpin. It. It's been great to have your company, uh, and hopefully, see you next time. As Flymo Chairman One says, don't forget if you haven't already done so, do consider hitting the like button and also sharing the stream to social media like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, all of those kind of things, and uh, let people know about the Monday Club. Everybody, of course, always absolutely welcome to the monday club we're about being completely inclusive absolutely. and it's also a case of during these lockdown times it's never been so important to keep this this contact going amongst like-minded people so ah this is tim condrup so old hand to the channel I see a lot of videos from tim condrup and i think i suspect this is uh, yes this is hornby class 25 in green and a test run and of course this is tying in with the Salts effect and the Hornby Class 25. I'd like to see them update the chassis a little bit for this and bring it out with TTS sound. So if you want to hit play. Yep, and while we're playing this, uh, we've had a question from Dave Pippin saying, Jen, do you have a Class 66 on your layout? I do not have a Class 66. Um, it's one of those things, it's a little bit more modern than I tend to go for, but never say never. Uh, Never. I wouldn't say no to a class 20, a class 66, but it's not necessarily up there on the priority list of locomotives that I want to pick up. Feel Me says, uh, do you speak any languages? I speak uh, Japanese, Mandarin, French, Korean, and learning Welsh. Ooh. Never when you have a Do you speak any languages apart from just knowing a couple of words? We. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> da. Um... Not with that. Um, no, I know. Um, I know a smattering of Welsh. I know a bit of uh, French, and I know enough German to kind of muddle through. Um, technically, according to the certificates from school, um, I I I know better French and German than I know English because I got a B in English language, but I got an <laughs> A in French and an A in German. So. Who knows how that works? <laughs> yeah, there, I think that's the case with a lot of us. We can get by and stuff. I can get by in French, Norwegian, and Klingon. <laughs> so a good, a good night to you, uh, David Scott. It's been great having your company. So we're just seeing. Um, Let's see if we can uh, jump on for a test run. All right. Is, is Map it, the dragon. Uh, yes, it is. Map the dragon railways. Um, it says get sixty six seven eight nine if you get one. She's in BR blue and named British Rail. Possibly, yeah. Um, ah, Garthian says uh, we've started clearing one platform at Than Festiniog, though can't do anything at the moment, obviously. And Flymo Chairman <laughs> one, Dubim in Kapod Beth Din Um, I don't know what it means. Uh, James Patch does ask, have you ever needed to get by in Klingon? Ooh, 37. Uh, Kishlach. Uh, uh, Kaplan, Kaplan. There, there are actually several people in the world who have married their partners, having not been able to speak to them in their native language. So uh, their was, only common tongue is Klingon. Their only common tongue when they met and went on their first date was Klingon. So while she was learning English and he was learning French, this is the particular one that I was talking to yesterday. No, so they spoke to one another in Klingon. <laughs> complete nerds. So we've got a thirty-seven there and very a nice. twenty-five. Thank so much thank you him. ever so much for that, Tim Condra. Uh, do nice we have to see him? Yeah, um, uh, always contributing some great videos to the channel every yeah. week. So thank you ever so much. And that, for that is true. Actually, every single week. My goodness. Robin Slower says, I'm part Welsh myself. Yeah, I am part Welsh as well. My mother is Welsh. Um, so that whole side of the family are from Wales. Uh, Swansea Valley, Um It's not spelt Ustrugunlice to uh, the uh, English speaking people. It really people. isn't. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a severe deficit of vowels. But what you have to remember is that Y is treated as a completely as a vowel in Welsh. So I do know a smattering of Welsh. So how many more have we got? Well, we've got one video and one very short video, which I'm, which has now made my uh, laptop crash for the, for the monitoring. That's Cat lovely. Catton Park Junction says, Good night all, stay safe, let you take care. Um, James Pett says, I approve of being half Welsh. My mother is also from near Swansea. Oh gosh, Swansea Valley. 
So whereabouts near Swansea? Because my mother's from uh, Ustragonlice, and so the, the whole family's from like Cumtuch, Glanreed. Um, it's getting uh, cold now. Yeah, <laughs> Morriston. Uh, that that's pretty. Isn't, isn't that a supermarket? Uh, J. Paul Anderson says, Jenny, have you seen the film Surviving the Game? I have not. Uh, New Western Groves. Oh, James Pat says, go sign on. Um, yeah, I know that place. Um, but um, yeah, I, w I wonder if we're related going back far enough. Um, <laughs> Flamma Chairman One says, I speak occasionally to a Russian chap in Gaelic. But we, neither of us can speak much of the other's language. <laughs> Sometimes that's it. You, you might not be able to speak the language that they speak natively but mm. you can find a one that works for both of you I mean, uh, this is a very very short video we've got now like ah this I'm is from up near turn width. the volume back on because apparently this has some fantastic terms but i'm not going to turn it up too high okay you ready so this is Henry's we'll have to spot. be quiet whilst it's yeah. running go <laughs> Very quickly say, uh, Desert 1977, you take care, thank you for joining us. Oh, we know, he stood by the camera shouting bum a lot, because uh, obviously... Well, you would. <laughs> well, no, because the thing is that we can't hear the sound. Thank you very much for that, Henry's Transport. Alex Faxton says, I prefer Backman to Hornby. It's strange, actually. Um, <laughs> ten years ago... I bought pretty much 95% of everything I bought was Batman. And now I'm finding that maybe only 10% of what I buy is Batman. Uh, and it's quite a change around. Uh, Hornby have really upped their game. It's not a case that Batman have dropped their standards. They've certainly put their prices up. But the, the standards have not dropped from Batman. Um, but it's just swings and roundabouts. Excuse me. Awesome. And, and, and it just shows that um, quite often it's, it's entirely down to um just uh, what um what a company is producing if they're producing the locomotives and rolling stock that you personally want then they're going to get your money this 26 is struggling tremendously here it, oh it's it's skidding that's what the problem is so i'm going to just quickly clean this bit of track okay with last but certainly not least we have uh I'm not even sure where this is. Mm. This is uh, Charlie McGowan. With there his, we are. Uh, train collection part two. Right, we yeah. might be able to show. Well, we might be able to show a fair yeah. amount. Of Can I just say here we are? We're cleaning the track, the track, track rubber. Um, it's the method that I use, but um, I haven't been so uh, tragic as to try and string out a full video just to show. Oh, that's how you clean your track. No, we, we you've done it in a, an update video before. No, no, I'm having a dig at somebody. Right, yeah, uh, Pete Clark says, my family live in Wales. Wales is a great place. You know, where it, you know, it rains. I loved Harlech. Harlech was nice. Yeah, because we, we spent our honeymoon at Harlech. Uh. I love that North Wales area, but of course, you know, the family's from South Wales. What did you make of South Wales? We didn't really see much of it, did we? We didn't. We were there for a reason. and uh, We were at the Abercrave Inn. Yeah, we were mm. there for a reason and we had uh, things to do, so we didn't see a huge mm. amount, but it was very, very pretty. Going to the dog says, got a dash, thanks Jen and Zoe, stay safe, everyone, you take care and hopefully see you next time. Uh, <laughs> Don gets Model Railway says, lest we get sponsored by Billy's Replacement Speakers, that's becoming a thing. Billy's we've got, I'm, I'm, I'll we've make got a to do a t-shirt. Yeah. So this video sponsored by and then Billy's just, Replacement Speakers. And then somebody underneath going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last but not least, for you, Jen, if you want to uh, switch over. Uh, we okay. Have, Are uh, we ready? Charlie make... McGowan yeah. with uh, his Model Railway Collection Part Two. I've jumped Excellent. on from what he was talking about at the start. Yeah, yeah. I will, of course, put the link in. But it looks very, very cool. Yeah. Oh, a Triang Princess. This is old school. Triang Princess. Yeah, I thought you might like this. James Pet says, did you make up the Billy's replacement speakers thing? Yes. It's actually from a comic that we did. Oh, my goodness. About... Yeah. 
And also we have to Eight say, nine years if you go to almostmedia.com, you can buy the comic collection, which, do you have any idea which book that's in? Is that book one or book I two? I believe it'll be All Over the House book one, because it's so early. So if you want to buy All Over the House collection book one, then uh, that should be in there. If not, just buy book two as well. You'll and enjoy also, it. don't forget <laughs> as well that my books are available from there, and it's a great way to support the channel, and also get something great for yourself as well. Don't forget as well you can also go and check us out over on patreon and help to support us to make the videos that you want to see on the channel and uh, there's several different tiers of benefits which range from uh, getting your name in the credits to getting Friday videos early right up to getting all manner of goodies sent out which so I have to do this year because oh my goodness we we kind of had an issue last year with all the COVID stuff mm. um, I will get you back on track though it's only one person, I think. It's only one person that uh, needs to get back on track. Oh, I like that. The Desert Sand Ooh, Livery yeah. 280. I ummed and ahed over buying one of those, and it's like a case of miss it, miss out. And I really do wish that I bought one of those. I love the background as well. Mm. Those are really, really nicely weathered uh, yeah. buildings. This is actually a nice way to show off your locomotive collection, have them sort of draw up and talk a little bit about them. Yeah. Labour intensive, your collection runs to like 200 plus locomotives. <laughs> so it's a Hornby Princess Elizabeth 46201. Of course, Hornby have brought out an all new tooled your version. Your favourite locomotive. In fact, you'll be seeing <laughs> that model next week with TTS sound in. Well, it's not that, that model, but it's the Hornby Railroad Flying Scotsman. Doesn't... I love a lot of stuff here. Oh, Duchess of Athol for the win. Oh, but that's the BR Green. So I always associate that with Duchess of Montrose because that was uh, Hornby Double did the Duchess of Montrose in that livery. Uh, Jay says, uh, sorry to have missed most of this week's club. Don't worry, buddy. You can always check it out on Catch Up. Definitely. Uh, of course, thank you for coming along either way. Very much. And it's, um, like I said before, you can watch these videos anytime you like. Yes. But it's, we're always grateful for your company and this everybody is, is welcome. Uh, Hornby B12. Yeah, I recently got the B12, added it to my collection. I think the video for that went out between Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And it is a great locomotive. The all new tooled version really is lovely. Um, in fact, actually, we, we've managed to sell those out from uh, Rails of Sheffield. Uh, no sooner had we put the video up than they sold their last one. <laughs> now, a V1, also the similar V3 from Backman, um, I have to say, um, two locomotives I'd love to get, but never got round to. And that's that the, the that Cali Pug. So well done. Yeah, it's cool. A Trying Hornby LNER. So that's a class, Holmes Class 83, I believe that's based on. How old would that have to be for a Trying Hornby? Uh, I would say that's early 70s. But it still looks good. So that's Hornby Flying Scotsman, but in the wartime black. My goodness. Michael Pollitt says, evening to you. So, uh, evening to you too. Good night to Keith Pointer. Keep well to you as well. Uh, Bolton Model Railway. I'm really oh, sorry Jen, I missed. Oh, have a look at that. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, look before it goes. Oh, oh, that's the one I want. Yeah. Oh, they've got that at Rails of Sheffield, the all new version. In that livery, really want it. <laughs> Can't justify it every single time. Oh, it's a beautiful livery. It really is. It's, it's one of these days, I will just go, oh, you know what? I'm just going to get it and review it. And if people go, you've already reviewed A4 three times, I'll be like, Yep, well, yeah, you're getting this one's a different colour. This one's sponsored by Billy's Replacement Speakers. <laughs> oh, is that a Hornby Double one? That looks a bit Hornby Double y. Um, so that's the original Triang B12. It's when they first put it out. So I've not been paying attention to the comments. Black Swan UK, <laughs> I buy OO Hornby trains. I believe I am addicted to buying these trains. I own 50 of them. I do not have a layout. They have never been out of the box. Can you advise on how to run them? Just get yourself an oval of track and a controller and lay it out on your kitchen table and just and enjoy it. just have them. a bit of fun. Definitely. Like so uh, look, how we did with uh, yeah. our nieces. Yeah, so thank you ever thank so, much you so much for this. Um, we're going to move on over oh, Star to... Star Wars teacher, good yeah. choice there. Oh, yes. May the force be with you there. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I think we've had a good set of videos. We tonight. have. 
Right, um, Garthian, just pluck up the courage and get a 60028 in purple. You won't regret it. It's money is what it boils down to. Uh, unfortunately, it's, I think, uh, the cheap... I, I've seen it for around um, £140, and it's still a lot of money yes, at is. the end of the day. So um, it's about justifying it, and unfortunately, just can't justify it. Uh, when I've got so much other stuff that I need to get because I've got to think about everything in terms of getting video content through and as much as I would love that A4 looking up there I've got six or is it seven A4s already so it's how I justify another A4 I may well get one eventually, but it's just on the on the to get list. <laughs> and um, I've just spent a load of money actually on getting a class fifteen. I don't have a class fifteen in my collection. It was a really great price, brand new old stock. So I thought it was a great opportunity to add a new type of locomotive to my collection. I've also got the Brighton H2 Atlantic from Backman on order in that really lovely London Brighton and South Coast Railway livery. Still waiting for those to come out. Um, I've also just bought uh, the dynamometer car, uh, which cost the same as what that Hornby... Oh, and buyer's remorse is kicking in. It's like... Oh. But you do like it. It's a pretty thing. And I'll tell you now, when you get that working with the lights, you will not stop crawling about it. Because <laughs> I know what you like. You, yeah. You're upset at the moment because you might have to do a bit uh, of it. But yeah, right. Whose was the last layout? Asks Richard Swiderski. Do we have a name? Um, Charlie McGowan. Charlie McGowan. I, I put the link into the uh, chat. Yeah. That was a Ham Shackleton there. says, when the new 9F arrives in a couple of days, I'll have six. It's only money and you can't take it with you. Definitely, definitely. Tell that to the ancient Egyptians. Yeah. Seriously, tell them that because uh, we're still digging it up. <laughs> Jay says, I recently saw the A4 in Experimental Purple go for just under 200 quid on a well-known auction site. They're going for like 140 brand new in the box from Rails of Sheffield. Um, Theo Me says, my railway is a mess. We derailments are sadly common due to hit and miss points set from eBay. Lizards walk around, mass hysteria, man accidentally fell off the station as Express was running. Wolfie Wolf says, Jenny was so excited when she told Zoe she bought the dino. Ah, uh, yeah. Millen's Mighty Model says, looking forward to the 9F. Southern Train Girl says, is 17 HSTs too many? Do I have a problem? No, you do not have a problem whatsoever. But look, I'm looking at the time. We've gone quarter of an hour over the Monday Club's usual time. It's been great having your company. The time has just flown by, which is obviously a good thing. Um, and thoroughly enjoyed this. So you guys take great care of yourself. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying don't forget to like, share and subscribe and consider heading on over to almostmedia.com, the sponsor of today's video, and picking up any and all of my books. Uh, you won't regret it. They are great reads and also it's a great way of helping the show and getting something for that. You can also head on over to Patreon and help us to make the videos that you want to see. And next week, don't forget, we have got a special video of your most cherished locomotives. And in my case, I'm going to be showing off the locomotives that have incredibly generously been um, donated to Weir Yard to show on the stream. Most of these have been shown in reviews, but there's a couple that have not been seen in reviews. So I'd be really happy to show these off. And as always, always so, so grateful for the generosity of people who have uh, supported the show in that way. But until next time, you guys take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. It's me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Bye.
train is leaving the platform. It's a last train from where you are. All aboard. Calling at all stations between where you are, somewhere else, and that place that you didn't want to go to. Mind the gap. Thank <laughs> you.